All right, we live. Okay. All right, we're live. Welcome everybody to another episode of Love Language the Roundtable. Um, pray everybody's having a good day and um, that you had a great week so far. Um, <clears throat> so today's topic is called uh, the enemy within self sabotage and relationships. And um, uh, you, as always, you can join if you're on the live stream. You can put your thoughts in the comment portion that we're trying to read them. And um, if you want to join, there's a link. There's always a link to join uh, under the details portion. Um, there's a Zoom link that you can join to be part of the panel if you want to do that. Um, to have your face shown or not, it's up to you. And um, so, yes, yeah, so that's, that's just the, the introduction to that. So uh, the details for the topic are um, self-sabotage involves behaviors or thoughts that keep you away from what you desire most in life. I feel like a commercial. I just said that just now. How does this behavior impact intimate relationships? Why would someone want to sabotage their relationship? What tools exist to help a person overcome a mindset fixed on? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, Shamika. Uh, what tools exist to help a person overcome a mindset fixed on self sabotage? So, even though this topic is um, about relationships, I I imagine, and of course, the it always flow has on has on flow, but I'm sure there's going to be a um, a conversation that hinders more on individual individuals, right? So anyway, um, and just overall, self sabotage, you know, in general, is a uh, uh, can impact a lot of different things, and hopefully we get into that. But we're again focusing on how how that mindset or belief system um, um, impacts relationships positively or negatively. So uh, as far as order, uh, oh my God, this is always stressful. I want to go first, but because I'm, I always do this, the questions. I, I, I think I'm gonna go last because I just, whatever. Um, so I'm just gonna call it out, right? So uh, Shema, Zebulon, Isaiah, Shamika, and then me, as far as order. Shema, Zebulon, Isaiah, Shamika, and me. So, any opening thoughts about the topic? Again, the topic is self sabotage. The enemy within self sabotage and relationships. So I'm going to mute. How about you say you want to go first? I'll tell you about people. I can't anyway. go first because I'll be talking too much. I don't want to talk the whole time. You don't talk enough, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go first. Um, I'm just playing, by the way. Um, what do I want to say? You said self sabotage individually and Relationship-wise, I guess, right? As an opener. Or just um, about the topic, period, about, about self-sabotage and how it impacts relationships. Just any, or anything about the topic, just in general. Yeah. yeah. I think that, um, I believe that self-sabotaging is huge in our uh, community. And um, I think it's really uh, happening uh, uh, tremendously because of lack of uh, leadership. Now, when I say that, I want to say it is a lot of leader out there. You know, I want to say that um, because you know, Chief Zebulon, correct me real quick. You know, that's hard. Um, <laughs> so I do understand that to be the case. So, but what we're seeing for those of us that are feeling like it's not really out there, I think a lot of times it's because we are loners. Uh, we're not um within a cultural or not even cultural just a, a structured um uh lack of a better term organization um to where these leaders that uh hopefully are righteous can uh teach us how to um not sabotage ourselves as much as we would if we're loners a lot of times you're self-sabotaging yourself because you're trying to do these things on your own. You're trying to figure it out on your own. And a lot of times it's not that you are uh, doing it on purpose. It's because you have not been uh, uh, taught correctly how to avoid that. Uh, I am one person that went through that, you know, over my 
years. Um, so a lot of us are doing that. So as we're learning, as we're going, it's elongating that process versus if we had that structure, that leadership, that good righteous leadership, whether man and or woman in our life to kind of help us speed up the process and uh, have more faith in, in ourselves and the people that we were because of knowing the, ourselves and knowing the people that we are involving ourselves with. Uh, and uh, when we have that sense of knowing ourselves and knowing where we're at, then it'll bring a, uh, that tunnel vision that we might be having of uh, whom we might be sabotaging ourselves with or what we might be sabotaging ourselves with, just life in general, because of the teaching prior. I think a lot of us are failing because we are doing it on, on our own. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some people can um, learn how not to more than others when they're on their own. But a lot of us, collectively speaking, uh, can't. Uh, I was just talking to somebody earlier. Um, how many minutes I got left? Is that she said no? Oh, I didn't know that uh, we were going to be keeping track of the uh, the first portion, meaning that it was just the opening uh, yeah, statement man. or whatever. So. Yeah, man, come on, man. You, 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 you're slipping up, Chief. Hey. Uh, okay, I'm going to say this last part there. I was talking to somebody earlier about um, the famous scripture in Bereshit when it says, it is not good for men to be alone. We understand that the uh, context of that is talking about the man and woman, right? But I like to use the concept past that. A lot of times in scripture, some people teach that it's twofold meanings behind certain things. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and teach that right now, that I believe that one is very twofold. E, I know I made up a word. Um, when you think of, stop the face, Tamar. Uh, when you think of people like if you are somebody that goes by the uh, New Testament, you look at Yoshua. Or Yahusha or Yeshua, you know, all the other names. Um, he didn't need the disciples, did he? According to what we uh, was, uh, know, he didn't need them, but he had them. And then he sold them to be amongst each other after him. Why? Because you can learn from one another, you can build from one another. And if you're alone, it's harder to be successful. It's harder to be successful. So last thing I'm going to say is I believe that a lot of self-sabotaging uh, uh, stems from lack of leadership in whatever subject that we're speaking of, whether it's life, you know, if you're a trucker, you're not going to be a trucker. And uh, if you can learn it on your own, but it'll be quicker and, and less self-sabotaging if you have someone that have been doing it for 30 years. So that's my point. And same thing with relationships, you know? So um, elders. So that's my point. And that was a long point. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm done. Bruh. <laughs> oh, my God. Um... <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, Shema, you a mess, bro. Um uh yeah. Self sabotage. I I know all too well about it. Um I came up in my younger years, and anybody who knows my now, you know, who knows my history, they know, so I don't have to go into detail about it. But you know, when you start believing certain things in yourself and believing certain circumstances, you create a narrative that's going to continue to support it. And so, what's up? Go get you a snack, and then go do your Hebrew. You know the routine. It's likely. Um, so, yeah, so when you're, you know, you create a narrative that's going to agree with your preconceived concepts about yourself, about your circumstances, and the, the 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 interesting thing about self sabotage is that very often in our in our journeys, we actually come across circumstances that could actually turn the tables on what we're going through. 
uh, you know, we come across circumstances that could create positive circumstances, positive outcomes. But the problem with that, it, it, it's, it's, it kind of goes back to that old saying of um, where they said familiarity breeds contempt. I say familiarity breeds content. We get, we become very content in what we're familiar with. So if you are accustomed to misery, if you're accustomed to um, dysfunction, and this is all you know, as time goes on and the opportunity for you to get out of that dysfunction comes along, you will create circumstances that will destroy it and then get mad when it's destroyed. Like, oh, see, that's why I can't trust this woman because, and that's the narrative, or oh, I can't trust that dude, I can't trust men because, or whatever, I can't trust women. We do these things because, again, the idea that we could, you know, if, if someone, uh, and I get, and I always give the example of, um, like with me, one of the things that I feared most in my younger years, I feared meeting a female who was actually good, a very, who was actually a good woman because I didn't know what to do with that type of woman. All I, you know, I knew what to do with loose women. I knew how to function with women who didn't think much of themselves anyway, because it, it relieved me of the, the burden of having to do anything with them, um, anything cerebral. Everything that we ever did was bedroom action. That's it. No conversation, no nothing. So the worst thing that could have that, that happened to me is me running into a woman who was actually about something back then. Because now, if it turns out that she is a good woman, it would fracture and destroy my preconceived doctrine of women aren't S-H-I-T. And now I would have to restructure everything in my head. The entire doctrine in my head has to now be challenged and removed because now I have the evidence that's, that it's wrong. But if I built my entire life or my entire a certain period of my of my life on that lie, I cannot allow something to come in and disrupt it, though disrupt the comfortability. So what do I do? I deliberately go and destroy the relationship. Deliberately. And then after I destroy it and my comfortability is restored, I continue the narrative by saying, see. I told you women ain't S-H-I-T. I told you. See, look what happened. But I did it. To my, I, I created the narrative. Self-fulfilling prophecy. So um, so going forward in, in, our, you know, in our discussion, of course, I always make the distinction between self-fulfilling prophecy and self-sabotage because self-fulfilling prophecy can be a good thing, um, depending on how you're angling it, whereas self-sabotage is always uh, bad. And I, think, I just think that, um, again, going forward, uh, and you know, and, and you know, kind of uncovering a few different things. Um, I think we'll see that much of the um, um, much of the horror shows that um, that occur in our lives and our interactions with people has everything to do with self. It has everything to do with what we are putting out there, what we're doing, as opposed to what someone else is coming in doing against us. So with that, I'll uh, I'll yield. Isaiah? Hey, um, wow. These two brothers kind of knocked it um, out the park as far as everything I was going to say. So um, I want to keep it real simple and short. Um, Self-sabotage is um, a painful thing. I think it's more so induced. Uh, the Chief Zeb already said it, but uh, more so induced uh, or created through fear. Um, the fear to move forward, the fear to kind of uh, even test the waters, so to speak, or, or to, um, you know, test and see if the theory or hypotenuse or whatever is correct. So um, I think a lot of times we, uh, in, in, in the facet of a relationship or talking about community or anything else, a lot of times we do these things because uh um, we become anxious and moving forward. Um, so I'm actually interested in uh, um, 
the platform that uh, Chief Zeb uh, kind of laid down as far as his opening statements, because it's the same sentiment that I have um, on this topic, at least. And um, they can be pulled into all avenues of life. A lot of times we destroy things because we don't want success. And um, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing what these solutions are to uh, to uh, kind of changing that narrative and uh, what are we going to do to uh, help people step on that limb and uh, choose to move forward um, and face their fears. So um, short, sweet, simple. Uh, pass it on to the next uh, person. Okay. Um, I believe, or my my uh, stance is kind of what Chief was saying, or everything <laughs> Chief was saying, but I just think um, self-sabotage is one of those things, uh, it's one of those bags. When people come with baggage, it's one of those bags, because um, in a weird way, uh, for me, I think self-sabotage is is um, a form of a person protecting themselves because depending on the I know for me because I've self-sabotaged um, depending on the person in their past and the things that they they come with um, you you always think something is too good to be true or um, you don't want to get too comfortable because you, you don't really trust anybody because anytime you probably have let your guard down, it's been an issue. So now you've built it up so much so that you can't trust anyone. And I'd rather hurt me before you hurt me. So this is going, this is how I'm protecting myself. This is how I'm going, I'm going to end it before you do, because you won't have one up on me type thing. So for me, self-sabotage is, is it's more of a protection thing. It's a weird form of protection, but it's a protection thing because it hurt less when you hurt yourself versus when somebody else hurt you. And I'll just yield there. Wait for the questions. Yeah, and I'm... That, that, I, was, yeah, I was gonna say that last statement that she made was insanely intriguing. That it's much, it's much, I'm paraphrasing, much better to hurt yourself than to be hurt by someone else. Wow. That's heavy. Yeah, and it's interesting how we have these conversations. The, you know, the topics are, um, for those of you who don't know, the topics are thought about in advance. Um, we try to like, you know, and we encourage, so with so that's a quick little plug, we encourage all of you all, if you have any ideas on topics, share with us. We we try to do our job, do a good job of um cycling it amongst ourselves, but we open a welcome are open to any conversation, especially if it's uh if we haven't done it. If we've done it, then we probably won't do it again. But um anyway, just say that. Uh but but real quick, um a lot of thoughts is, is in my head about the topic. What I was gonna say was when I said, Oh, it's interesting. Um, so Zebulon had mentioned, um, you know, Zebulon's my book, my book pusher. If if drugs, if we were selling drugs, he would be the one that would give me the no. Yeah, I got yeah, I got yeah, I got the Carter in the background. So yeah. <laughs> so uh so he he suggested a book called Who Am I This Time, which was written in the 80s. And I, I read it and my middle son has read it and we both love it a lot. So that's a plug for that book. Again, it's called Who Am I This Time? But what's interesting about that is that it is Thank you. It's called uh, Who Am I This Time? It's Jay Martin is the uh, author. It's called Uncovering the Fictive Personality. So um, I got mine off of Amazon. It's an excellent book. Um, but it talks about the idea of fiction in general. And it was interesting that uh, for those of you who watch Breakfast Club, I'm a big Breakfast Club fan. But Will Smith and um, what's his face? Martin Lawrence was on there this past week talking about Bad Boys 2 and 3, whatever, Bad Boys 3. And Will Smith uh, went into this whole diatribe about, uh, not diatribe, but I guess my law, because it's, it's a proper word, um, about how he has to be conscious of not being the Will Smith that everybody thinks he is. So the rapper and the actor, 
he has to remind himself that he ain't none of that. So he was he just talking about how he went through years of being that for the sake of everybody else. So um, I would like for us to talk about that as well. Uh, but he really went into it. And just to sh what Shamika said about it's better to hurt yourself than to, than to have somebody else hurt you. Like what? And then even Isaiah said, "What's the fear? Like the fear, obviously, is a is um is a big a big part of of self sabotage. There's there's something that that we are trying to do to keep ourselves in our bubble. And I and again going back to what Shema said, which I thought was profound about the community. You know, it's I'm a loner. It's easy for me to roll around as an individual because I've been doing it for so long. Even when I was married, I felt like I was by myself, right? And my family on my father's side is like that. It's smaller." Um, then my mom's side of the family, but everybody was always kind of air quote independent. I know we talked about the independent black woman, I think last week, but uh, so it's a similar thought. But real quick, I saw this thing earlier. I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna be quiet. Uh, there's another woman on Facebook and she put up this quote <clears throat> and it said, or, or a statement that says, some people aren't good at asking for help because they're so used to being the helper. Throughout their life, they've experienced an unbalanced give and take. So their instinct is usually, I'll figure it out on my own. The self-reliance is all they've ever known. And if we look at ourselves as a people, we have, you know, we all talk about trauma and um, which is real that and it continues, but all that stuff I'm sure is a big um contributor to the idea that uh, you know, I'm gonna protect myself at all costs, me before everybody else. Um and uh and the last thing I, I I'm gonna say in my rant is that it reminds me of this song by Mally Music called Walk on Water that is talking about all of this that we're talking about, right? The idea of fear and standing on faith and what that entails. If you ever get a chance to listen to that song, listen to it slowly and peep the lyrics. And then I think that'll, um, just something just to keep the thoughts going about the topic. So uh, I know Shaul has joined us. I'm not sure if you wanna say a few opening words, bro, but you can, I'm mute myself. Um, were we, were we, uh, were you guys, cause I kind of missed about, about a good 14 minutes of it. Cause like every time we, most of the time we do the show, my signal be weak cause I be in different parts of the country or whatever. And so um, I'm not sure what was shit. I came in on the tail end of uh, like, like literally the last couple of words that Zebulon said. And then I heard, you know, Yashiyahu speaking, Shamika speak or whatever. So I, I'm not sure were you guys addressing the first question or are we just, this just the introduction or something. This is just the introduction on the title. The title is The Enemy Within, Self-Sabotage and Relationships. So any uh, initial thoughts before you get into the question? <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, just listening to uh, what uh, Yeshiyahu and uh, Shamika had to say about it and what you had to say about it as well, um, I think you know, I didn't catch Zebulon, but I mean, you guys piggybacked off of him as well. So I, I know he said something fire, but um, self-sabotage, I, I understand. Um, I don't I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to come off as crass by saying what I'm going to say, but self-sabotage. To me, is 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 a. It is a, uh, it's an enigma. It's, it's a, I look at it as a negative thing or, or something that's, though I do agree with what Shamika was saying as far as it's a way to protect yourself or whatever the case is, I do understand that, that point, but that comes from not having a certain level or not being taught how to, um, or put in a certain position, which is not necessarily a self thing. That's just the environment you grew up in. But it's, it's, you know, we have to learn how to discern and, you know, better and, you know, have a better understanding of who to be around and who to surround ourselves by, so that we don't end up in situations where we feel like, man, this ain't going, this ain't this, this ain't it, and it could very well be it, and you just kind of destroying your own blessings because you know or you sabotaging your own blessings because you like man nah man I ain't about to go into that cuz I don't want I don't want this to happen you know what I'm saying to me so I, I think it's 
I, I see both sides, you know. Just me personally, I'm I'm a I'm gonna go more so with my own experience and say that I, that um it's a negative thing to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I just you know trying to avoid saying much because you guys kind of already touched everything. So I'm gonna just and I explain later on as the questions come out what I mean by these things or whatever the case is. But you know that's it. I, I don't have anything else to say about it. No, we appreciate that. We appreciate you always joining us. Um, uh, real quick before we get to the first question, uh, I was talking to my mother-in-law recently and uh, was telling her, you know, that I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm over it. And she's like, well, you might, uh, she's like, she looked at me and she's like, man, you might be missing out on your blessings. So what you just said just now, Shaul, just reminded me of what she said to me. I think that's some truth to it, but um, we'll get to it. So the first question is, how does this behavior impact intimate relationships? I'm gonna put it in the chat box as well on Zoom, but again, how does this behavior that is self-sabotage impact intimate relationships? Hmm. This is a broad. These are, this is one of those questions where, man, you can like spend a whole hour but I'm gonna try to condense it in seven minutes. You're welcome. The, the, the questions are always supposed to meant to, to spark conversation, but you're welcome. Oh my goodness. How does this behavior impact intimate relationships? I think I could keep this one short and sweet, to be honest with you. Um, it impacts it negatively, in my opinion. Um, when you think of self-sabotaging, like Shaul was bringing out, it really is just straight negative. It's no progress um, involved in it. Um, even when we believe that it's, it is progress, and also even when we believe that our you know, decisions are valid. Some of you all know about, you know, someone I was courting. I can't even call it courting yet because we really didn't start. But I was supposed to go. Y'all know the story. I'll get into it. And the situation that took place, well, I could say it. I was courting a young woman. Well, she was older, about seven years. Yeah. And the, it, the situation, I believe, and even her elder, believes, uh, without going into details, I believe, still believe she's a great woman, but I think that her past caused her to self-sabotage us going forward due to a misunderstanding that took place um, that wasn't even something I wrote. I just shared a post. You know, you know I'm transparent with y'all. Shared a post, and the post actually, if really looked at and dissected, was to bring a different perspective for both man and woman, although it was geared a little more towards the woman uh, in regards to ethnic, ethnic, ethnicity or ethnic comparison uh, in leadership and amongst other things. But what I'm trying to say is that misunderstanding could have been uh, dealt with in really, really a little while you know, a conversation. And uh, I think that a lot of times within self-sabotaging and in affecting the relationship, I think it's a lot of um, pride and uh, what's the word I'm looking for, y'all? Um, selfishness involved with it. I'm going to tell you why, because you can have a person that's consistent and you agree with the consistency, but due to like, like what Shamika and what Tamar was bringing out, um, maybe past things that took place, it will cause you to be selfish in that manner and only geared towards your side of it without looking at the full picture and it causes you to self-sabotage. I know I just went into, it was real slow me delivering that, but 
but I'm trying to get, give an idea because she went through a lot. The woman went through a lot. And she knew as well as some of y'all that know me personally that I'm not this type of dude. You know what I'm saying? But since that post was shared with no, um, with no caption that was shared by a woman, actually, that was posted by a woman, that just calls out a boom. Cut it short. Cut it off. And now you got the person looking like, whoa. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because I just had this conversation before the show. So it was kind of actually interesting that we just brought this up. I think the self, self-sabotage, and long story short, it can affect the relationship because it's not, you're not giving the, the chance of this relationship that you once believed in. And you, you thought highly and greatly of, and it can take, will be one small thing that can cause it to cause you to just move it out the way. And that's what happened with her. Uh, I'm not blaming her for, I think it was, you know, I think that we allow, we, we, some of us uh, come to a point where we, I mean, we're human. I get it. We're human. But I think if we're going to push forward with this uh, walk and we're going to try to put the walk in place, then I think that the conversation should be there. You know, I think that the, 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 the balance should be there, you know, and that's what took place with me. I was just trying to give y'all, a, uh, give you all a, um, a, um, I don't know why I'm so lost right now. Yeah. I'm normally not like this. So I don't get it, but you know, something that took place with me, but it's something that I see a lot in uh, our community and something I see in our people. We're so instant gratification versus um, really going, going through the, the what might be the issues. Uh, we want it now, we want it now. And the moment that something happens that is not liked, that might not even be big at all. Y'all got me thinking about what took place <laughs> right now. Because I'm like, I really don't, that was so, you know, it was so small and that was self-sabotaging, literally. You know what I'm saying? You have this great woman or this great guy you speak of, and it can be the smallest of things. And just because we want it our way, that's another reason of self-sabotaging. Uh, or another example of self-sabotaging, we just want out. Even if the guy or the woman is what you're looking for. But it can be like what Shamika and Tamara have brought out because of our past. Or what uh, um, Chief Zaya brought out because of our past as well. I think that all that plays a part in it. And it affects the relationship. Because those things are not addressed, we jump right into it, you know? And uh, I think that, you know, like for her case, I don't think she was ready, even though what's, you know, the couple of years that um, it took place. But the thing that took place with her, it just started to uh, really happen that year, the beginning of that uh, last year. So honestly, I don't think she was ready either. You know, I can't go into details. I'm not going to put her business out there, nothing like that. But I think me assessing it, you know, I talked to an elder and everything too, but me trying to assess it, I'm like, I just don't. And I did get it. I got it after a while. Like, that, you can be traumatized through your past. And sometimes that should be something that can, should be talked to. How many minutes I got left? I'm, I'm probably almost done, right, Zep? Uh, you, you actually tapped out uh, about 10 seconds ago. Hey man, I ain't hear the. No, I, I thought you heard. I actually uh, played it. Uh, I, oh, I, oh. You know. All right. So closing it out, man. How does it affect the relationship? It affects it horribly, and I think it goes back to what my opening statement was about. Uh, did I say some things in the opening statement? And that's it, man. I just think that. That's it. I'll wait to the next question. I believe I'm next, correct? Uh, no. I thought I was. But... Zebulon. Zebulon. You're next, Zeb. Chief Zeb. I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm... I, mean, if you want, I mean, if you want to shoot, you know, if you want to shoot your shot. No, I, I, can, I can wait. I can wait because I, I probably have a lot to say. So I'm, I'm just going to – you probably going to hit it already, but uh, it's cool. Oh, probably not. But um, but no, uh, nonetheless, I, you know, listening, you know, listening to everybody – I was thinking about an earlier example that I gave. This might have been like last year. I, I think I gave the example. This is one of the, our earlier shows um, when we were still um, 
in audio land. Um, what was it called? Um, uh, blog talk, I believe it was. But um, you know, and I use the example of uh, of Minister Louis Farrakhan in that uh, him knowing that he's Israel. You know, you see it all the time. Yes, the you know, yes, the so-called Negro, the Black Americans, we are the Israelites of the body. You know, in the in that whole narrative, whatever that whole narrative that he pushes, and it's like, okay, no doubt. And he's known this for decades. Um, his wife was actually uh, learned and was a student under Ben Ami, Ben Israel. So clearly he has no problem with, you know, with the concept. But I always use that, that example because I say, well, if he knows that he's Israel, why does he continue to push Nation of Islam rhetoric? Why? And the answer is very simple. And that is, because he has too much tied up in the nation of Islam in order to back out of it. There's hundreds of millions of dollars invested. There's decades of dedication to the arm um, movement. There's millions of followers who've built their entire lives and their lives of their children and the lives of their children's children on this particular understanding. He knows this. As a leader, he's a very intelligent man. So he knows this, he realizes that it would probably be more damaging to come out and say, hey, we were wrong. The truth is we need to get back to this tour or whatever. He may lose his entire flock because the, the, the cognitive dissonance that was set in would just rupture everybody. So everybody would just die of aneurysms. They, they would, their head would just explode. Um, because again, all of the years and the decades and the money, everything that's been invested in this understanding, you can imagine the, you know what I'm saying, the fallout of that. And I use that example, um, you know, in reference to this, that, you know, how does this type of behavior, uh, the behavior of self-sabotaging impact intimate relationships is, again, it's the comfortability. When you're comfortable in a certain mode of moving, a certain mode of thinking, no matter what the circumstance, no matter how good the person, and this is not just relation, uh, marriage scenarios, this could be friendships, this could be uh, employment, no matter how good the situation is, you'll find a reason to remain in the same mode of thinking because there's comfort, because, you know, there's, com there's more comfortability in dysfunction um, than trying to discover happiness, because happiness is an unknown territory for a lot of us. So, territory. You know what I'm saying? So happiness is a strange. It, it, it's, it's a strange bedfellow. We don't really know what to expect with that, but we do know misery. And because we know misery, whatever. And, I, and I'm, you know, speaking from experience, when you know misery, you languish in it because this is where you're comfortable at. You're like, you know what? I know this is horrible. I know I. It's like drinking Pepsi. I know I shouldn't be drinking this. This is the damn devil. I know it. However. <laughs> I got these chips. I got this hero over here. I'm going to knock this down. But I know it's toxic. But why? Because I was raised drinking Pepsi. I don't, and that's what we do. So the, and what this ends up doing is it destroys every relationship, every interaction that we have. It destroys it along our way. We become male and female versions of black widow spiders. We just have no, we have no choice but to destroy what comes our way. Like Shema said, not necessarily because we want to, but because it's the only thing I know. I know destruction. Building, I'm not too familiar with building. Building up, eh, I don't know about all that. You know, that's that can go either way. But I do know destruction, and I know and I know it well. So let me go do that. Let me go destroy this friendship. Let me go destroy this employment situation. I know this is a good job, but you know what? Ah. I'm just not going to show up for work today. <laughs> and, and just, and, and, and we do these things. And I, I, you know, I use the analogy of, um, like with lottery, you have some people that are so accustomed to losing that if they play the Powerball and win 20 million, they'll be mad because they didn't play the mega millions and get more. So they'll, they'll ignore the blessing and say, you know what? But I could have had this. Ah whatever like that and so here it is they got a blessing here and they'll in their mind they've already destroyed that as well again familiarity breeds content 
what we're familiar with, we become content with it. And anything to the contrary becomes the enemy, even happiness. And so any relationship that we have going forward, it must, it, it has to, and by all means must be destroyed. Otherwise, if we can't destroy it and it remains as is, it'll challenge, directly challenge our preconceived thought about what we think the situation should be. And again, people don't like to be presented with situations that challenges their comfortability. So when you hear people say, oh, you know, um, you know, and you see it all, 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 you know, all Israelite men are, you know what I'm saying, are, are wicked, are wicked as hell, all of them, whatever like that. But then they run across one that's not. They will necessarily have to sabotage that because they have too much invested in the narrative of all Israelite men are wicked. It's the same thing with brothers. Oh, you, you can't trust none of these Israelite women. They're all damn whores. Then he finds a good one. And he's like, uh, yeah. Uh, and he'll figure out a way to turn that good woman into a damn whore so he can say, see, see, I told you. Rather than just say, you know what? I was wrong. All, all Israelite women are not bad. Let me repent. But again, you know, familiarity breeds content. Man, that's seven minutes going fast, man. I don't know. That's seven, so minutes, seven minutes is of the devil, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um. How could it affect the internet? It's Isaiah. It's Isaiah's time. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. We all out of whack. Okay. Him now, me. Okay. Sorry. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I think I think we all jumping. Um, man, how do you follow that up? I told y'all Chief was gonna hit the points that I, I wanted to kind of kick on. So that 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 just makes uh my talking time a little easy. I ain't gotta speak that much. Uh man, where do you start? <sighs> what does this thing do to relationship? Self-sabotage. Um, I think in order to kind of really get into it on a relationship level, uh, it'd be a good idea to talk about some of these behaviors. Um, Shamika made a very interesting point as far as um, um, self-protection. And I think self-sabotage, for one, puts a person in, in the mind state of having a false sense of protection because they have now either conjured up are now added emphasis to this small notion of an issue and uh, blew it out of proportion to make themselves feel protected. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, maybe missing more. Um, in the grand scheme of things, maybe missing more. So um, with that being said, I just kind of want to talk about some, uh, maybe some behaviors that are, that are kind of, um, I guess seeing um, uh, commonalities in all forms of uh, um, self-sabotage. So, you know, uh, we can kind of get, I guess, at least my perspective um, on how I look at it. So um, with that being said, um, I think we're looking at, you know, uh, destructive behaviors. Um, that cause our, uh, you know, relationships to either end up subside, you know, things like uh, pushing people away or um, being overly needy, um, you know, losing your temper, not having uh, control of your emotions, which, you know, and these things happen, but uh, we're, we're adding that, uh, as we talked about in probably a good amount of shows ago, the, the, the toxic aspect or the uh, overindulging into those emotions or, actions um you know a lot of times we begin to play games and um manipulate others other people's thoughts or um our own thoughts in some cases when dealing with when dealing with these relationships yo yo okay okay the comments are going crazy look man i can make up whatever word i want or say it wrong because i blame the educational system that i grew up in boom that's right <laughs> you know, go talk. Go talk to uh, uh, the city of uh, Irvington North and Hillside. Mm, mm, yeah, I did that. But anywho, back to what I was saying. Um, so 
some of those behaviors um, implemented. And uh, Chief Zed made a, a, a whole bunch of interesting points. Uh, so, you know, y'all can kind of rewind back to what he said to kind of dig in deeper. But when we're looking at these relationships, our relationships in general, and we starting to see these signs, we have to wonder and ask ourselves why. Um, a lot of times we talk about trauma here on this show and uh, the comfort, as uh, Chief Zeb said, uh, living within those traumas and uh, being comfortable with doing that. So doing something else seems real foreign. And uh, we can take this walk or this our, 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 most of our aspects of this walk as far as understand as far as understanding the Bible and whatnot and, and look at that. Um Chief Zeb at the end of his thing said uh repentance and um to repent it has to it has to come with um a leaping out on dare I say faith or a pushing yourself out there to say I was wrong. And sometimes that's not easily done. Um so in short to answer the question, this is it's terrible it's horrible um you know uh these behaviors impact in a negative way in most cases and even when we think it's positive sometimes that's us tricking ourselves to believe so because we take uh as they say strain at the net you know we're looking at so small issues are issues that can easily be overcome if a thought is applied or if uh working together is implied but uh as they say you know some people on the show said uh you know, they're naturally loners, which I think a lot of people can, uh, you know, fit that narrative, so to speak. But um, when you're dealing with relationships and connecting with people, that sense of being a loner has to be dissolved. And uh, when it's not, we, 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 it can lead to some negative uh, situations and behaviors. So um, I'm not sure exactly how much time I got left. So to answer the question, it's it's terrible. It's horrible. Two minutes, two minutes left, Aki. Two minutes left. Oh, great! You know, it's terrible. It's destructive, and um, it's something that we kind of need to tackle head on if we want to uh, move forward in any facet of life. Saying that uh, we want to unify, be together in relationships, friendships, loving friendships, um, whatever have you, intimacy those type of things um, has to be dissolved because it's easy to say, hey, I rock alone. But once you become in a relationship with someone to whatever degree it is, even business relationships, it's not, it's not you operating alone anymore. We have to uh, remove the selfishness out of it. And that's kind of what, you know, the root of uh, self-sabotage is, is the focus on self and any form of a relationship, which expresses uh multiples you kind of can't look at self first in some aspects you know we're not saying you know lose um your self-identity or lose um love for self but if it's only love for self it, it it's not going to succeed and uh that just breeds for more negativity so i'm going to yield there and let um Shamika go next because uh, she was wanting to go next before I went, went at all. So, boom. No, nah, I'm just joking. I'm done. Hey, that's so not true. I just got a little screwed up. But, um, hey, I'm late. Cut. Okay, I got to leave. So, um, I'm with uh, Shamaz. Shamaz. Uh, overall answer was it's terrible, it's horrible, and that's what it is because the word sabotage in itself is not positive. So, um, what I think, Jude, quiet. What I think is, um, I'm big on cause and effect. So, you being the person that's self sabotaging, um, could affect the other person in a horrible way. Like uh, Chief was saying about one of his fears was meeting a good woman, but what, ha what if he had met that good woman but not done good by her and self-sabotaged that, how would that have affected her moving forward? 
what how would that have changed her moving forward so i feel like self-sabotage yes it's a uh how you say false sense of protection and or um a thing dealing with oneself but the parties involved can be affected in a major way that can shift them and change them how they move in relationships um moving forward because maybe it's a person that usually put it all out on the table and put you know where they heart on their sleeve they can then retract and that can mess them up for the next relationship so uh, for me self-sabotage is horrible but for b both parties because for every cause there's an effect for every action there is a reaction and it might not end good on either end it might mess up both people lives completely or how they move in relationships completely so yeah everybody else said everything that's all i had to add and, and just real real quick uh just as a, a very very brief uh response to sister shamika um as it turned out i actually did uh back then i did run into a good woman and i destroyed her uh and anybody like i said i i, I spoke about this on uh previous shows and i'm not gonna um you know waste uh, more time on this particular show going too deep into it or whatever but yeah you know i was 19 years old came across a very very good woman she was re she was ready dived head first into the covenant she was just she embraced everything and it scared the hell out of me and i'm like wait a minute she's not fitting my narrative I can't treat her like a whore. <laughs> this is what I'm accustomed to doing. So I did with any self-respecting young Israelite did. And, you know, I had sex with her and told her to get the hell out and, <laughs> and wild out. And of course, you know, you know, you reap what you sow when I, I caught what I deserved, um, uh, down the line, I got exactly what I deserved in the process. Um, cause you can't, you know, nothing can, you know, nothing goes unchecked. Uh, as far as the most high is concerned, you will catch what you need to catch. Um, uh, and when I say catch, I don't mean disease. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> but yeah. I, but so when you said that, Sister Shamika, um, I just I, it just made me think like, yeah, I know exactly um, what happens when you have that type of mentality. You have to protect the weak self, and part of protecting the weak self is not to allow some some someone strong to come in because they'll it'll expose the weakness. And so I had to get I had to get her out of my presence, uh, and it was one of the worst things that I ever did in my life. Uh, but again, that's another a situation for another time. That uh, whatever. But um, with that said, uh, I, I'm gonna uh, get up out of there, and I think uh, who's not? I believe uh, um, Shaul is next. I believe. No, it's me. I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. So oh, my apologies. I'm sorry. So here's a here's an order again. Shema. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Shema, Zebulon, Isaiah, Shamika, me, Shaul. It's a it's somebody on here named Ari, Ariel. I'm not sure if you want to speak or not, but you can That's go there. Um, I invite him. Oh, you know him from the Hebrew. Uh, oh, oh, right oh. The, the one that be putting up videos with me, speaking. Dark skin, brother? Huh? The dark skin, yeah, tall yeah, dude? Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. So just to give them a run a rundown real quick, like what we do. If you want to speak, you can. I can. We take turns. You get seven minutes to answer uh, the question or ask the question or comment, whatever. So you'll see the how it goes after the next person, I'm sure. And if you want to jump in uh, with the conversation, you can, or you could just listen this time around if you want to. It's up to you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Welcome to the Shema 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 uh i want to read some of the comments real quick because um zaquan was was spitting hot bars on the <laughs> on the last thing he said that uh he he said that um self-sabotage is a is a form of wit of mischief which i thought that was interesting uh then he said self-sabotage is linked to stress and a lack of confidence then he went on to say so if one can't control their partner because of their confidence or faith self-sabotaging will then suffice seems controlling selfish and mischievous so that word mischief um caught my attention probably because souls of mischief no anyway. hey hey now uh okay 
Um, oh, and then also I want to read what Patricia wrote in a, on a different post. Um, she said, past hurt and not understanding the why of the sabotaging behavior. One tool that can be used is to try and find out why and being willing to accept that you may be the problem and that you may need to change your toxic behavior. A lot of times we don't want to admit that we need to change. We oftentimes use the excuse, well, this is who I am. And if you can't deal with it, that's your problem. The gotcha, oh, is, that, <laughs> the gotcha is that no one has to put up with your toxic sabotaging behavior. So that's what she said just to the topic in general. Again, I want to run through the, the question. The question is how does um, self-sabotaging impact uh, relationships? And I would say, I don't want to repeat anybody, um, but but uh, you know, not only does it does it block what you have coming, but it don't benefit you. So even if you are being selfish, you should love your. And this is ideally because we're not talking about trauma, because trauma is not trauma is not like A plus B equals C. Trauma is like A plus B times five, <laughs> and it's a whole complex narrative. So we're not talking about individuals who are self actualized. They understand. That, that like Shamika said, you know, you put forth energy, it's gonna come back to you. We can read it in a book. The books say that, but we don't necessarily believe it because we wouldn't behave the way we behave and then be shocked when the outcome is what it is, right? So um, so it's so definitely it impacts it, it it deters you from getting what you actually want and desire. And I can testify to that, right? So I'm to the point now where I don't even wanna I told Shaul, like I don't give no Fs about nothing when it comes to me, and that's just me being honest. Cause I'm tired. I'm 41 years old. I'm tired. I'm gonna keep playing games, right? But like I said, I had told to my talk to my, my mother-in-law, and she looked at me with with pity, like, "Oh, is that where you are?" You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's something I'm gonna have to work on um, with that. But I, I think it's it's the product of a lifetime of sin. You know what I'm saying? And not doing things the proper way, which I think Shaman mentioned earlier about the community. If things were in place, you know. Ideally, we would have successful relationships and we would have people that we could confide in and tell, you know, that these things happened to me before and they would, you know, help you to restore yourself because we have the ability to restore ourselves, right? But but we don't want to. We kind of, you know, you, you do get to a point in life where you kind of coast through life. You don't really think about changing um, and trauma or things. When things, when you hit a brick wall, it's actually your opportunity to rethink yourself. So, um, I think we all self-sabotage in some kind of way, right? And I love the example that uh, Zebulon gave because this topic of self-sabotage is across the board. We know we shouldn't eat certain things, but we still do it. So whether or not, so you might have a prosperous, healthy marriage, y'all both leveling on one another, but maybe in the middle of the night, you sneaking cookies and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know your blood pressure high, you got high blood sugar, high blood, you know what I'm saying? But you're still doing it because it's not, there's always ways that we're trying to um, um, destroy ourselves always and so it's a it's about being conscious of um not only other people but definitely yourself if you love yourself then you're going to do the right things to, to make sure you're straight but but that's for everybody to decide ultimately and i, I think what shamika said was key and um, this last thing i'm gonna say what she said was key is that you know when you self-sabotage you hurt other people in the process so and i said before on this on on, on this platform if you are a person that is not conscious of who you are that is you don't really know what you want or you think you want something but you're not making the moves to get it then you're the problem nobody else is it's not nobody else's uh mission to fix you you have to be willing to say i'm effed up or i am not ready or i'm too immature or i'm afraid it just it's okay to say those things even if you said to yourself in the mirror shaul had me saying such myself in the mirror bless his heart but those affirmations that we have in our head and that we speak out loud, they manifest into stuff. And we try not to be all, oh, it's spooky and it's a mystery, but we need to be conscious of our thoughts. They are real and they end up manifesting themselves because we don't, um, especially if we're not careful. So that's, that's what I want to say on that. Uh, okay, so you up. I'm in here, hmm. okay. Hey, so, um, so you, you do look so like I a hooper. You look like a hooper, man. You look like a hooper, man. Can't wait to get like you on who? the court, man. Can't wait to get get you on that court, man. You uh, do that. Here you go. Here you go. Go ahead, like. Here you go, man. You don't act right, man. You don't act right on, on live, man. <laughs> All right, man. I'm, I got you, though. I'm, I'm coming for you. ASAP. Anyway, uh, how does this behavior impact relationships, right? Okay. Okay, gotcha. Um, well, first, I mean, sabotage is a verb. 
in a noun, but the verb portion of sabotage is like uh, deliberately destroy, like or damage or destruct. So, if anybody thinking that that's a good thing, you know, not saying that anyone has to this point said that it was, but some people may think that uh, it's okay and it's not. But what I would say is this: um, I, I, a point that uh, that uh, Tamara made about about you know, we all do it in some ways and, you know, um, things like, um, you know, what Shamika said as far as, you know, we hurt other people and things like that. And that's true. And that's why I would say that um, being, uh, uh, having a honest mindset, because, you know, everybody, you know, this, you know, being real has been trendy amongst our people for the, ever since I can remember. It's like, Everybody walk around like, I'm real, like I'm this and I'm that. And you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, to me, what being real is, is being real with yourself. And understanding what it, what it is that you do on a positive side and on a negative side. And if it's negative, uh, working on those things daily to change, to change it to uh, uh, redirect yourself in a different direction. Um, because self-sabotage is a, is, is really, that that's like, that's a mental issue. That's a psychological issue. You know what I'm saying? That's really a, that's an issue where you're talking yourself out of certain things or telling yourself that hush, I wait till I get on start talking, you want to start barking. Anyway, uh <laughs> um it, it it's a it's a psychological issue. You know, you're telling yourself that you don't deserve this or 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 you're telling yourself that you know something negative about you know you can't do this or you know these different things like you know and i did uh tell uh tamar about the the whole affirmation thing and you know telling yourself because i mean really man you gotta really think about it like man most of us ain't nothing to spit on like i know we we tend to think that what we doing is so great it's not it is because the all the glory supposed to be given to the most high in the first place and I said, I'm not really the one to like really just go into a bunch of scripture, but Galatians 5 and 22 is like one of the coldest scriptures in the Bible because, you know, when it's talking about the fruit of the spirit and, you know, being love and joy and gentleness and goodness and meekness and temperance and all this type of stuff. And the thing is, the thing about it is, is that it can really put a strong, it can really put a strain on any type of relationship. And I give you an example, like, and I always try to speak from my own experiences. Like I've been experiencing this in my own marriage, you know, for, you know, people that know or seen me and my wife in person or seen us together, uh, know how we are with each other, but behind the scenes and I like how Tamar brought up the, the Will Smith thing earlier because I did watch the interview with Will Smith and Mara Lawrence and um you know you know and basically what all Will was talking about is a cult of personality. But back to my you know personal situation is that behind the scenes is sometimes um like I I've I have had conversations with my wife before where she have explained to me that she feel like she don't deserve me as a man that she feel like I'm, I'm better than her or something like that. Even though I never said anything like that ever, you know what I'm saying? Never mentioned anything in that capacity, never even conducted myself in that type of way. But for whatever reason, in her mind, she's saying this to herself, even though I'm telling her, look, it ain't, it ain't cut like that. So I, I you know, I, I use my own example to say this is that, you know, the scriptures is, is 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 true when it says, so a man think of, so is he. It's a mental thing. And at the end of the day, 
the more we understand, um, and I'm speaking to the, the self-sabotage, I'm speaking to the aspect of self-sabotage that's psychological or mental, not necessarily to the protection aspect of it, because I do agree with Yeshayahu that it's a false sense of protection, because it is. I don't believe in it. I would never, ever subscribe to it. I would never be ever, ever in my life in that mental state again for a short period of time um, years ago. But I would never go back to that state. And really what I realized it was is that um, I, have to, I have to understand what my purpose is um, and what I'm here on this earth for and live out that purpose, you know what I'm saying, um, for the continuation of whatever the most high's will is. And I'm just speaking like a Hebrew right now at this point, you know, and not speaking necessarily super transparent to everybody. But at the same time, my whole thing is that um, if that's where you are, before you get into a relationship, before you get into, if you're, if you, if, if you're in the, the blessed position of being single or whatever, and you know you have an issue with negativity and self-sabotaging yourself, then it is not fruitful or, or, or it wouldn't be wise for you to enter into any type of relationship with anybody because all you're going to do is, like Shamika said, damage the other person, you know, uh, possibly damage the other person. And so if you're a person that's, that knows this, you know what I'm saying, um, then you should seek therapy or some type of counsel to understand where this is coming from and why you're telling yourself that you don't matter or why you're telling yourself that, uh, yeah, if I go through this, somebody's going to hurt me, you know, walking around on eggshells like everybody is out to get you. Like that is, that, that is ruin. That is calamity. That, that is, that is a singularity, a dark hole, that, that a black hole. That is, you know what I'm saying? Because you start to suck everybody into it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not a good thing at all. And it's something that needs to be fixed. And it should start off by telling yourself, talking to yourself um, about your flaws. Talking to yourself about what your negative uh, faults are. And so that was basically it on what I got to say on it. And start telling yourself that you do deserve things, deserve positivity. And then you will start reaping those benefits. You know, you start reaping, you, you plant the seed in your mind, you'll start reaping the positive nature of where that comes from. And you will never, ever be in that position again. And no one else can come in and take that away from you or ever hurt you again because you know what to look for moving forward. And that's where the foundation of discernment and understanding of other people comes from in my opinion, but, you know, that's it. Shalom. Oh, can I say something real quick? Hey, go ahead. I was about oh. to go ahead. Okay, I want to two things, uh, Tamar and Shaul, two things Tamar and Shaul said um, about the positive affirmation. The positive affirmation is, is very important, and I didn't know how important it was until the last two years of my life, because I used to, and even when I started, but I had to keep going. I felt so weird saying kind things to myself or like, you know, building myself up because I, I'm one who I'm um, always hard on myself or tear myself down. But I, um, that's just one thing. But the second thing I had to say, um, when Shaul said about his wife, he did not give her no reason to say um, what she said to him as far as being better, um, him being better than her or her not deserving him. I feel like I did that with the most high. I I felt like I was about to self-sabotage with the most high because I told John at one point, like, I don't have a gift. Like, my gift is not as important as yours. Like, like I was like, most high got a gift. Everything. Everything. You better shut your mouth. Girl, in case it's everything. <laughs> but no, this was, even, I think this might have been even before that. Well, you I got that Friday the bell case. case I, I didn't see how that was serving the most high. <laughs> got that Patty the bell cake. Oh my gosh. But I, I just didn't see how that was serving the most high. My thing was I needed a gift that was directly serving the most high. And I felt like his gift was directly saving people or directly like helping somebody. And the most high was like smiling upon that. And I used to be like, I mean, you got this, you got that. I ain't got this. I ain't got that. I was self-sabotaging 
not even recognizing what I can do with my gift to help or to, you know, gear toward anything towards the most high. That's where begging for the homeless and um, trying to do pork free things came in for me. I had to find something in myself to feel like I was pleasing to the most high because I felt like only my husband was pleasing. And I felt like that was self sabotage. Hey, you know what, man? I just want to say this real quick. <laughs> uh, because that's a great point that you brought up about that. And, you know, I, just real quick, I want to say that if the, these things come from, a, come from pride, you know what I'm saying? When you feel like, you know, and I'm glad Shamika brought that up about John Boy, that she felt like she didn't have nothing to get to the world and he had something he was giving to the world that was impacting someone else. And the thing is, is that that's never true that someone is impacting someone else more than you are if you're a person that's doing something. And the reason why is that you never know who you're impacting and what it's doing to them. It may not be 10,000 people. It may not be a million people. It may just be your children. It may just be your husband. It may just be your mother or your father or whoever. Hey man, that's, that's good work. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you have to, and you have to accept the fact that not everyone is going to be significant to the degree to where they garner attention from that significance. And so at the end of the day, you have to accept the fact that what you do is good. What you do is special. What you do is unique but it's unique in the way that the most high intended it for be, uh, to, to be for you. And so it don't matter if it's not what John Boy was doing. It doesn't matter. Only thing that matters is, is when you wake up and those who love you, your circle, your people, the people that you're around, is that how well does it impact them? And I understand that a lot of these things come from the fact that people feel like they don't have a purpose if they're not garnering attention from a certain gift or a certain talent and that's not true Every, all of us have things that the most high have given us to do and we have to do those things and be content and satisfied in those things it may not be a lebron james it may not be a jay-z it may not be a king david or a saul or a samuel or whoever it may not be to that degree and that is okay you have to accept that you can't be walking around telling yourself that you're not anything because you're not David or, or Christ or, or someone that you feel like is more significant because that's not what life is about. Life is about impacting those who are impacted by what you bring. And you have to understand that. And that may very well just be your son or your daughter or your mom. And that's fine. Accept that and be content and love that. I just wanted to say that. Amen. I want to say something. I want to say something, y'all. I want to say something to Shamika. Shamika, you listen. Yeah. You I'm here. All right. Real quick, I want to say that uh, piggybacking off of Shaul, I want y'all to remember. You know, those of you that um, uh, subscribe to the literature, because we got people that listen or watch that I'm sure probably don't. Um. You contribute there in your everyday life just by, you know, keeping the commandments of the Most High because that's wisdom to the nations. Remember, that's why I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Dabarim, Deuteronomy speaks up. Then also, when you go to the New Testament, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, I might be a little rusty, uh, talks about that the uh, angels rejoice at bringing one in. Right, a thousand angels, something like that, versus a thousand, something like that. I gotta, I gotta get back, you know, refresh myself. Then, last thing I want to say is, I've touched, glory to the Most High, more people by not saying a word, by not doing, by uh, more than my music, more than my books, by just doing what Deuteronomy speaks of, them seeing the character. Like, man, what do you do? Like, you know, or whatever. You can touch more just by even being silent. You know, uh, and you're doing amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, uh, the cupcakes that I've never tasted, I'm sure it brings conversation when you do, when you're out there. That's that's what you do, you know. Uh, I, last thing I'm going to say, I wrote, when I wore a turban one time, you know what I mean? 
I could count on three hands how many conversations just me wearing certain things has caused, and then it brought forth me talking about the the most high. And you just touch my camera contact with a few people from. You know, so what I'm saying is, you know, John Boy might have a million people following him. You know what I'm saying? He might be, you know, the Jay-Z of the I'm playing. <laughs> but you're doing think of, think of Obama and Michelle. I ain't big in the whole politics stuff. But do you think it was just Obama? Nah, Michelle accomplished a lot. She's she bringing a lot to the table. So, you know, I'm sure the stuff that uh, John Boy did, you contributed. All 38 albums in three years. So, you know, you're doing great, sis. Keep it up. Shalom. So, I love that. And and I'm going I'm to I'm I'm allow Ariel to say something if he chooses to. Um, uh, but I want to just say one thing uh, to, um, to Shema. <laughs> you said that you could count on three hands. I'm like, how many hands do you have? That was weird. <laughs> Uh, but Aria, if you want to say something, I'm not sure if you know how to mute yourself or unmute it, but uh, no pressure. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to all the observed tour. Um, and, you know, uh, peace and blessings unto all. Um, I don't have much to say. First time on here, uh, Shama invited me most recently. I'm sure I got invites before that, but. Um, I definitely love what y'all doing here, you know. Um, it just sounds like positivity going around, and that's what we need the most of, you know. Um, we identify ourselves, you know, those that do identify themselves as, uh, you know, the stock of Jacob. We identify ourselves with these curses, you know, and not enough for times with the blessings that were bestowed upon us, so. You know, um, the more we start looking towards these blessings and uh, living towards the blessings, then the more that we'll become a righteous people uh, once again in the whole, you know. Um, and that starts with talks like these, you know, to just get it out in the air and let people voice their opinions so we can start healing ourselves and one another so we can uh, do what we was put here to do in the first place. and. Um, you know, that's to guide the world in a, a proper direction that brings forth peace and blessings to everybody, you know. So um, that was it, you know. Um, I'm sure I'll be tuning in more often because uh, this is very lovely. So uh, peace be upon you all, and uh, may the Most High's name be glorified in all that we do. Hallelujah. That's right. Bring it out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, bro, again for uh, for joining. We hear every Shabbat most high willing, and, and you know, you're welcome to always jump on or or not. Um, and to everybody that's on the live, we see y'all speaking amongst yourselves and and, and um so I want to get to this next question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um the next question is why why would someone want to sabotage their relationship? And we might have already I know I know Shaul touched on it, uh, but those of you who did not, um, yeah, why would somebody want to do that? To themselves. First, that's the next question. I'm, I'm gonna put it in the chat too. All right. Um, I'm gonna be quick on this. I promise, because like you said, Shaul spoke on it uh, a lot. Uh, on it, real good, real good stuff. Um, and uh, Shamika has as, uh, as well, and yourself. I think all, all of y'all did. Honestly, if you want to be honest. So, uh, why would? Let me go read the question one more time. And while I'm finding this question, I just want to thank all of y'all, man. All of y'all that tunes in and those of y'all that is making this platform uh, what it is, man. I've been hearing it's been touching a lot of people, man. So if any of y'all think it's not, it is. People have been contacting me. People have been contacting uh, Chief Zebulon from what I know. You know, y'all keep doing it, man. Keep bringing this up. Keep being transparent because that's what we're about too. And none of us are going to judge. Neither one of us. We're going to try to help and, and, and so forth. Um, my answer to the question, which would be real short, is, let me read it one more time, what, why would someone want to sabotage their relationship? It's basically what we've been talking about. What I said, too, it's, 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 a, it's a lack of, and we said this in a lot of different uh, shows, uh, education, you know, um, education can hit what Shaul was talking about, a mental, a mental 
Uh, it's a mental thing. Um, I forgot the exact words, but I know it's dealing with mental. Mental, what'd you say, Aki? Mental. Um, I said it's a mental and a psychological issue. Mental and a psychological issue. And, and a lot of it is, uh, like I said, education. A lot of us not even aware of it. A lot of us don't have elders in our lives. I know that some people hate that too, by the way, especially in our community, because of what's being on the forefront of what we see versus what's really actually happening all across the board. So I think um, a lot of this um, has to do from lack of education, um, also what we've been through, like we all been speaking of, and seeking that help, desiring that help. A lot of us don't even desire it. We've been through so much that we think it's um, not even us. You know, so when, we, when we don't think it's us, I think Patricia, if she's still there, as long to you, sis, uh, miss you, miss the big old, uh, you know, the head pieces stand out. But um, a lot of us, we won't look at ourselves, too. And uh, it causes us to continue. I like how Shamika was bringing out that we, uh, uh, we end up sabotaging it, then it, it affects the person that probably didn't have nothing to do with anything. Now they're going to sabotage the next one. It's a whole cycle. So I think education is a big thing. I think dealing with our past traumas, like Tamar and Shows bringing out, and and that that's it. That's that. Those are the major things to me. And you know, having the foundation of 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 culture, and I, I like to say the Torah or the Tanakh you know, the most high. I think if you really put that in your life and you apply it versus just words and just reading sometimes, but actually apply it with the proper help and the proper leadership and the proper education, we will be good. And with that, I yield. So, um, I think, um, Oh, wait, wait, let me get a set. Um, I think a lot of people, um, and when I say a lot, of course, again, I'm, I'm, you know, it's really just a certain portion of the population. I don't want to make it seem like it's the majority, um, but a significant uh, portion of the pop, of, you know, population amongst our people, um, I think there's a certain, as far as why they want to sabotage their relationship, it kind of goes back to what we, I mean, we already said it, so I'm not going to go uh, too much um, back into it, but because this is all they know. They, it, when, when you know and understand destruction, you become proficient at it. You, you, if you ever see construction, you know, construction building or construction sites where a building has to be demolished, the team that comes in to, de, you know, to demolish the building, uh, that's pretty much all their skill set. They, you never see these same guys at a construction site to build because that's not what they do. Their thing is to bring in the wrecking ball and smash this thing to bits. If you ask them, hey, listen, can you build a second story on this house? I, I don't know. <laughs> they can't because that's not where their skill set is. Their skill set is in destruction. And so it's almost like they have no choice but to destroy that which, you know, which they come across. Um, but again going you know being that we already covered that that aspect i just wanted to just say briefly that um that when you look at relationships um a lot you know there's there's even people in my own family who they um like i have female females in my family who will tell you with a straight face and a clear conscience that they are men eaters um that they're in a hey, and they, they're very clear on it that then they take pride in the fact of, of you know, chewing up men and spitting them out, um, which is ironic because, <laughs> you know, but anyway, but, you, you know, and, and you look at these, you, you look at these type of scenarios and you're like, how can they, but then you realize that, oh, no, the reason why they feel this way, because, again, they've never seen anything to the contrary. They haven't seen anything to the contrary. They've never seen successful um relationships so they can only they can only feed off of that which they see um there's an old saying by um uh um elder masha um the original leader of um isubk in the early 80s 
he taught that when there is no righteousness, it's evil that you're attracted to. And and and, and, the, and the, the the logic behind that 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 particular anecdote was that when you so when you're surrounded by wickedness and evil it's the only thing that's available for you to extract your experiences from. There is nothing else. So if you see nothing but negativity, degradation, dysfunction all around you, and that's everything that you see, you're going to, especially from a young age, you're going to assume that this is essentially what life is. Now, let me get in where I fit in. Let me take my portion in the destruction and play my role uh, you know, to, uh, to the fullest. But when you surround yourself with that which is righteous and surround yourself with that, you know, with, with people who are um, who are optimistic in their orientation, this begins to change how you move forward, how you interact with people, because you're seeing the other side of the um, you're seeing the other side of the discussion. So when people destroy um, when they when they're destroying their relationships, again, like we and I think all of us have covered this um, throughout the show that we're doing it because we have nothing else to offer. If I could offer you function, I'd give it to you. <laughs> but I don't have I don't I, I don't have that information. What I have is let me punch your face with a wall. Or let me go cheat on you. Or let me go do this and whatever. That's what I know. And so because I know that and I'm proficient at these things, let me show you how I go in on it. And so like Shama said, a lot of it it has to do with education. If you don't know any better, you can't do any better. Shaquat. If you don't know any better, you can't do any better. And in my teenage years, because I grew up in dysfunction, I grew up, I grew up in, a, in a heavily dysfunctional family. Heavily. You know what I'm saying? The women, all promiscuous, wilding. The men, drug dealers. That's the only narrative that I saw growing up. And it wasn't until I came across Camp Yakar with Chief of Chiefs Naftali, bless, most I bless his memory, Chief Prince of Poor, Chief Amos, bless his memory. When I came across these individuals and they gave me, the, you know what I'm saying, a narrative of, uh, you know what I'm saying, of holy, righteous Israelite activity and movements, that's when I got, that's the other narrative that that's going to go to war with the old narrative. And it took some years for me to, sort of like Jacob's Wrestling, where I had to, you know, the old self is like, nah, yo, you can't, you don't love these hoes, <laughs> whatever like that. And the other side is like, no, no, of course you don't love hoes. We don't deal with hoes. We deal with righteous women. We deal with Torah women. And that, and so it's a constant clash and you grow out of it. Eventually, you're able to reconcile a lot of this. But most of us never do. Most of us, because we become so comfortable in the dysfunction, the dysfunction because, becomes function. And functionality becomes insanity. So when you see people who are bringing functionality, who are bringing righteousness to relationships or whatever, it scares the hell out of us. Like, what manner of nonsense is this? You mean I can have a functional marriage for 20, 30 years? Really? No, we can't have that. No, let me go out there and consort with these whores and break the marriage up and destroy the marriage. Let me just go do that. So I, so again, just the, um, cause you know, I'm down to 40 seconds, but um. But I think that's what a lot of us are doing. A lot of us are doing the things that we have rendered to be comfortable um, with ourselves and, we know, and what we have been taught and we have not been able um, to get out of it. And, you know, but fortunately, many of us, um, we have been given the opportunity to see um, functional, long-lasting, successful marriages. We begin, you know what I'm saying? We were able to see functional, um, productive camps and congregations and temples, whatever like that, that shows us that, oh, no, we can do this. We can change the narrative. Um, but until then, we'll continue to destroy what we come across because, again, like I said, it's all we know or it's all that some of us know. And with that, I'm going to fall back. Uh, right. Hmm. <laughs> Funny. Very interesting question. Um, Chief Zed, like once again, you know. Won't be the last time though. Knocked it out the park. Everybody who won before me, knocked it out the park. 
Um, I'm going to kind of be short and simple. Um, hopefully, I don't use too much time, but I talk slow, people. Um, Chief Zeb alluded to a term um, in his uh, statement on this question, his answer. Um, you know, women um, call themselves um, men eaters. Um, I'm quite sure, you know, everybody on this show, everybody listening has heard that term or some variation of it. Are our, our, our men. What does it mean, by the way, y'all? I'm sorry. I never knew what a man eater means. She's a man eater. Oh, my goodness. Uh, really? Really? I'm sorry. That's what we're doing. I right? really don't know what the term actually means. I mean, <laughs> but I don't know what it means. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Explain it to you. It's just you. It's, it's, it's a real simple, um, real simple um, situation. It's basically you, you get the men, you lure them in, you get what you can get out of them. You run them into the ground, and when they cannot offer you anything more than what they were they initially wanted, they uh get rid of you. <laughs> That's it. And in the process, leave you. You know, basically, they leave. It's like going to war, and you just you have a trail of bodies behind you. Their whole their whole function is to get what they have to get, and in the process, destroy you and leave you with nothing, um, on all levels. And growing up. Now that's a man's that's a man's point of view. I would love to hear this woman right here tell me what <laughs> do women believe man eater is. Tomorrow, I'm not saying that's what yeah. you are. I'm yeah. saying I know we, we, we think it. Some women say they say something different than what uh, Zeb says. So I want to see what a because I heard women say it. So I want to know what a woman is. What, what's a man eater to a woman? But good stuff, Zeb. I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah. No, actually, I cut you off. So. Touche. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to cut off Isaiah when he's in the middle of the talk, but real quick, I mean, I don't know because I'm not a man either, okay? <laughs> I'm always, always supposed to be a wife. That's always been my purpose. But I think, I think, I think just to be, on, as far as balance, maybe maybe a, a woman feeling like she's equal with men in disrespect. So maybe it's that because we have that competition amongst ourselves too. We're like, well, you screw me over, I'm going to screw over the next man. So maybe. That's exactly it because my cousin told me at one point that um she's not going to get serious with a male because she's going to do uh -huh. guys for, for keeping it you know pg she's going to do guys how guys do females so that's that's what it is yeah all of those are right for uh for for Shema and, and those who 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 not so sure of the term um our men saying you know they about to catch these bodies out here you know what i mean or or um what's the old school term my grandmama used to say womanizers and 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 menizers um you know <sighs> but anywho um you know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a term of endearment in some cases you know people people love these things and uh, while everybody was sitting here talking and, you know, the question of why comes out and um, the easy answer is because they want to. Um, you know, looking at it from being afraid to not wanting to step forward or, you know, having a, um, a fear of um, pushing yourself out there to be transparent to, or, or transparent or be viewed in a certain way to move forward or to uh, be loosed from your trauma could be a traumatic experience within itself. It's not, it's not used to, you're not used to it. Um, whatever the case may be, um, all of those things come into effect. Uh, in the Bible, it says uh, we attempted of our own lust. And at the end of the day, um, a lot of times we don't want uh, what we think we want or what we think we want in our heads might be too much for us to handle. And in turn, we begin to do things to chip away at that because the ideal of what we want is um, too grandiose, too big. So um, in short, that could be a reason why. That's not the only reason why. I think we've all alluded to multiple reasons why, but um, they all kind of intertwine uh, when we look at those terms of using other people or, you know, sucking them dry because we've been 
done wrong or we felt that we've been pushed to the back or we felt unheard or felt unwanted, um, which I'm quite sure everybody at some point who's dealt with any form of a relationship on this earth can say they felt that in some parts of times of their life is kind of what you do with it. Those are those all equal up to trauma in some way. And as uh, Tamar spoke on earlier, it's not a A plus B thing. It's a, uh, it's um, many different variables. And I think this question is one of those many different variables kind of all jumbled into one pot, so to speak. Um, and it, it just creates a, a whole ball of negativity if we wanted to. And I think that's, we. I don't think, I don't know if, if, if we really talked on this, um, but I'm quite sure we have Chief made made um, references to it as well. But, uh, you know, that whole ideal of, you know, being satisfied with less, but speaking to wanting more is a big thing. It's a big thing. And, um, you know, being accountable and, and the essence of being accountable and being transparent is um, understanding that. Um, and sometimes listening in, because even go ahead and correcting that could be a whole, you know, stepping out on what's not, what's not um, normal. You know, it's easy to sit in uh, misery and say, hey, I feel miserable. But, um, you know, exploring that, uh, that green grass, you know, the term, the grass is um, always greener on the other side. But uh, in some cases, that could be true. But we rather sit where we know the ground is all patchy and, uh, and brown because we don't want to explore the green because that might mean stepping uh, or tripping over a few things. And uh, it's... Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought there. Got sidetracked on something else. Um, yeah. Sorry about that, people. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy within itself. Um, you know, as they say, insanity, or the uh, let's say uh, not the actual term, but the uh, the most used term of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Um, stepping out is is a different outcome. That's doing something different. It's a lot harder to do that than doing the same thing because you know what the same thing presents. Stepping out could, pre could, could present the same issue or not. You know, I've even heard, you know, on this show, you know, in other places as well, people uh, allude to, um, you know, uh, who said that? I believe it was Shamika that said it. Um, no, Tamar said it. Tamar said uh, in reference to her, a conversation she was having, she, uh, um, a blessing could be blocked when you avoid certain connections with people. Um, you know what? How much time do I got left? Uh, actually, 15 seconds. And I had, actually, I reset the clock because of the, uh, the, you know, the uh, Shema, whatever, when they came in and, uh, you know, and myself as well. So I, I had actually reset it. Um, but I'll, I could throw another. I could throw another minute or two on it if you need it, brother. Uh, no, I ain't gonna take that long. I, I can wrap this up. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up right here. Um, a lot of times we we begin to uh, do things to kind of push ourselves back and push ourselves in situations because it it's suitable for us. It makes the most sense at the time, but uh, we may be missing other opportunities by doing that very thing. Um, I guess uh, leading up to um, the solutions portion, which comes in the next question, if I'm not mistaken, um, I'll kind of expound more, but I don't want to hold everybody else up. So I'm going to yield right there with, with, with just saying uh, it's time that we uh, become aware. And uh, when we see these things, address them and if we're going to do it in the sense of a partnership or a relationship to any degree um let's not be afraid to speak on it so um i'm gonna I'm go ahead and yield there
everything was very well said y'all did a great job um so i'll just add oh what can i add um no so y'all basically said it like you know hurt people tend to hurt people when you go through stuff or when you've been through so much hurt at one point um your guard goes up and when your guard go up it's easy to um self-sabotage and you tend to push people away before they can push you away or at least that's what i i know to do at one point was to push people away before they push you away maybe because that's what um you're used to or some people even feel like they um that's what they deserve you know what i'm saying like they don't deserve better some people feel like Bingo. they don't deserve better um and then there's a point that i don't think none of us hit about the people who are um so cocky that they end up self-sabotaging like you may get a guy or whoever that thinks they are the stuff or a female who thinks she all that and you so used to being the big dog that you find somebody that you really really love but you can't even express that um out of maybe maybe fear of loving that person or because you think you're the big dog i ain't about to show this person that i love them because I'm the man or I'm that female type thing. So people self-sabotage in that way too because they want to hold up. It's the, like Will Smith said, that um, Tamar brought out. He want to, he presented this thing for so long, he had to then find a way to be just himself. And social for him, social media was a way for him to just now show who he really is as a person. People be too scared to show who they really are and they want to put on this persona because they want to look great in other people's eyes. And they're not really thinking about their own happiness because to them, that's satisfaction. But when you got that one thing versus the, it takes a million things to satisfy you. You find that one thing to satisfy you, you still feel like that's not enough. But you have put this persona up to be the man. So now you cannot let it go. And then you sabotage, maybe could have been, your wife and the mother of your children or vice versa, you know, but I yield there. Cause you know, wow. everybody, everybody said, wow. That deserves an extra ISUPK. That's right. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Um, so I had wrote down some stuff in my, my trusty notebook. Okay, so some of the reasons, again, the question is, why would somebody or why would someone want to sabotage their relationship? Um, definitely lack of self-love, right? So, because again, it's, you're only hurting yourself, you big dummy. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, also, what's interesting to me is the idea of love and lies, right? So, speaking about the fictive personality or fiction period, I mean, we, we love a lot. You know, um, even as a kid, kids lie. Uh, all the time, not all the time, but <laughs> they have the tendency to make up stuff because that's what you're introduced to early on our stories. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so then it's 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 a comfort in that. It's a comfort in um, in, in in your mind living in a reality that does not exist. And I think that once you become an adult, that's when we often learn how hard the world is and how different it is from our expectations. I'll just speak for myself, right? The whole narrative of a brother coming up on a white horse. On the white horse is always white. That's racist too. Okay. But coming up and, you know what I'm saying, being a knight in shining armor, I still believe that. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's a, a, a all out lie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, unless the story of Rufus is probably a good example of that, but never mind. But that's 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 an anomaly, right? And um, lack of confidence. I think Shmika already said that too, you know, believing like you don't, feeling like you don't even really deserve it. You know, and that, that can be, uh applies not only relationships but also to health if you believe that you should be sick if you get comfortable with being sick you're not going to ever change or if you're comfortable or if you feel like um uh, this is a real quick rant but a lot of times you know when we eat certain things they don't agree with our bodies especially as we get older but we'll just keep eating it because this is all we ever done is eat that you know what i'm saying so it's a deeper like i showed say it's a deep mental thing that's going on we get comfortable in our current existence and even our desire to be more like uh to to to, to align ourselves with the with the statutes and laws and commandments of the most high that's even a 
stress for us because we're so used to being dysfunctional. We don't even understand. We we think the Sabbath is a big deal. This is a big issue amongst us. Like, oh, the Sabbath. Oh, I, I got to sit down for one day. We we struggle with it, you know, until we start to do it. And then we, we appreciate it. But just those are all things that we all have in us where we are, are content with dysfunction and not wanting to move forward uh, because of fear, because of laziness. I don't think it's you know, we use words like mental, and I don't want to ever downplay somebody's trauma or make it like they have a mental illness. I think a lot of it, and we said it before, is that you just don't want to be better. We don't want to step out of our comfort zone. I think um, a brother online uh, said, mentioned about the about the comfort zone. We don't want to necessarily do that because it's too because it's comfort. It's comfortable for a reason. We don't want to stretch ourselves. Also, we have an over reliance. I'm saying we collectively, just as a humankind have an over-reliance on other people, even, even in the construct of, you know, psychologists. And I'm not against psychology, obviously, right? But we, okay, pe people will tell you, right? They'll go to a therapist and they'll talk, 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 talk. And they'll say, yeah, my therapist showed me how to do blah, blah, blah. But a lot of them will say he didn't, he or she didn't, didn't really help me. It, they allowed me the space to talk, to talk it through. You know what I'm saying? And to come to the conclusions that I need to come to. So we have this over-reliance on other people to make us happy. Nobody's going to make you happy if you don't make yourself happy. Nobody's going to want to date you if you don't like being by yourself. These are all things that I think are, I would call them facts. And so we have this over-reliance on other people to make us better than who we are. And we, uh, Shaul said this, I think it was Shaul that said, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. He just said the other day, you know, the whole idea of, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't misquote you, but it was something about um, you know, we, we don't really trust God to, to really give us what we, we need. We, oh, this is what he said. He said, we put people, um, we give them the responsibility of having to make us happy so that when they don't do it, it breaks us up and we're now we're on the flow again. But you're making this person an idol. You know what I'm saying? So we have a lot of stuff in us as human beings that is resistant to health and wealth and well-being and joy and love and all the fruits of the spirit and all that stuff, whether you believe in the New Testament or not, even if you believe in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, we, we have a natural aversion to those things because we don't really believe that we deserve it. And it might also be that if you get it, maybe you feel like you'll mess it up. But, uh, you know, so the decision is ultimately, I think, within, within all of us to, to figure out how we want to live our lives and to not put it on nobody else. The biggest thing you could do is tell yourself that you can achieve whatever you think you can achieve. That's the biggest thing. You, you, you the one that's standing in your way it's not anybody else and it's not your relationships not your parents it's not the kid in third grade who stole your lunch it's you you have the ability to change um your life so uh aria i'm not sure if you want to say some some thoughts before we get to the last question if so i'm gonna mute myself oh, i just forgot about me huh oh, oh i'm sorry <laughs> my bad go ahead bro Oh man, that's crazy. I forgive you. No, I'm just playing. Um, why would somebody want to sabotage a relationship? Uh, I think, I mean, that's why Zebulon, man, you got to stop going first, man. You be killing the whole thing, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really instruct me to, uh, that's right, or to remove me from. Cause I, cause I do go on France and I know I'm long winded. So hey, that, that man killed the, that, that man answered all the questions before he even got to it. I'll be doing that too. Though. I can't blame it on you, man. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but it's just like the, it's just like Zebulon said, man. Um, you know, when you, when you grow up in a certain environment, that's what you're used to. That's what you're attracted to. That's what you want to do. Um, like they say, two, two negatives make a positive. And you know that positivity is positive is negative but it's positive for them because that's what they're used to that's what they want that's what they like sometimes we don't even know we like that stuff and we still and, and we go and do it and then when somebody pointed out we be in denial like oh man nah that that can't be it you know what i'm saying um right yes uh, yes said false sense of positivity and when when I say positivity, I'm not talking about the word positive in a positive way. I'm saying that the, the, they get a positive charge from being negative. You know what I'm saying? They get a positive charge from being negative towards one another. Two negatives make a positive. Um, and so, but you know, the thing is, I always try to give a solution every time I get on the show. And, you know, 
really, these things can be solved by just making the right decisions in regards to who to marry, who to produce children with, um, keeping the father in the home, letting the father lead the home, letting the father instruct the home. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, and then that way they could teach their children. Because the thing is, it, it was this, it's, it's this meme that I've been floating around Facebook for a few years where it was showing a boy um, in his young age that had a bunch of pieces of his body missing. And it was showing his father taking pieces of his body and giving it to the boy or adding it on to the boy as he grew older. And so at the end of the day, a lot of these things that we're talking about are as a result of this is how essential fathers are and how important it is for them, these fathers, to have wisdom and to have understanding so they can instruct their families and give their families that confidence and that um and and, and that that know-how, that discernment that they need to, you know, counteract these negative things in the world because the world is negative you know it's, it's, it's going to be things that people are going to go through no, ma no matter how positive you are no, no uh, you are or no, no matter how good you are or how well you was raised it's, things are going to happen you know what i'm saying so we have to we have to fix this by bringing the families back together and, and putting things in a proper perspective and proper place and so um Another thing as far as someone wanting to sabotage a relationship is just from the fact that um, the hurt people, hurt people aspect that Shamika and y'all brought up earlier, like, that's just what it is. It's like, she said she had a cousin. I was like, I'm going to just do what they do, what they do to us. And it's like, you know, a lot of the times, man, a lot of, you know, what's crazy is that the, the, the best things that happen to us in our communities never get highlighted. Um, it never get highlighted to the degree that the negative stuff do. But at the same time, it's so many of us and there's so much good that is going on that we, but, but, you know, it's kind of like we interested in only the, the bad things. And it's like this whole, you know, quote unquote cheating thing. And, the, you know, the man is dogging women out. Like that's not as big <laughs> as, as, as the media portrays it to be. It's, it's a narrative. It's a narrative. That's how they make money off of these movies and stuff like that. These different scripts where they, they play it like that. You know, the dudes out here dogging females out and then, you know, he get hurt by a female and then they, then somehow he get her back and they ride off into the sun. Like all this crap. And it's like, man, we got to get off of that. Cause it's, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not like that. To, it's not everybody. I'm going to say it like that. It's not everybody. And so I'm going to yield with that. I really had too much to say anyway. I just want to throw my two cents in. What I had to say wasn't really that significant anyway. And it's cool, though, because y'all be lying. Killed that thing, man. I appreciate you, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, if y'all don't mind, um, Damar, when you throw out the uh, next question, can I go and get it out the way so I can slide out? Yep. So, uh, no, you can't get in front of me. What you talking about? Uh, uh nope. I ain't have it. Nope. nope. I'm playing hockey. I'm or, playing. Or you can always, or, or you can always just type it if you want to just type it because I don't want to necessarily. I mean, we'll we'll see. Uh, Arya, if, if you want to say something, yeah, no, I was your, your mic is open. But Isaiah, if you need to slide out, that's cool. Just you can type it in the thing. I can read it for you. That's all right. Um, I'll, I'll let you mind, bro. I, I can pull it down. Okay. I was right. kidding, man. You can take my place, man. I was just kidding. I just want y'all to know that. I was playing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, the last question. Is, um, it said, uh, what tools exist to help a person overcome a mindset fixed on self-sabotage? This is the solution question. How do you overcome it? You want to go? Or you want me to go ahead and knock it out? Oh, I, okay. Oh, okay. I thought you said no. Um, real quick. Um, I'm gonna be quick on this. Um, solutions, man. Overcoming this first thing um, is recognizing 
recognizing these things or if you can't recognize it, um, since we're talking about relationships, have a, a situation that's not sabotaged by yourself, go ahead and uh, point that out so you can recognize it. After recognition is done, um, heating it and owning it. Um, a lot of times we, we, we talk about, um, you know, doing things to build up encouragement. Uh, we spoke on, I posted two links on uh, self-affirmation. Self-affirmation is only complete when you're able to say, this is what I did wrong. This is where I got jammed up at. So um, go ahead and put that into practice. Um, there's plenty of books, videos, watching love language, you know, things that we can do to go ahead and- uh, That's right. That, go ahead and say it again for the, for the one time. That's right. <laughs> that was a that was a pretty sneaky and crafty plug right there, Aki. Very nice. Sneaky and crafty is uh what my old man used to be good at. <laughs> Not but um in all actuality, um we talk about professional help and ain't nothing wrong with it. Um finding somebody or finding an outlet that you can speak on, talking to your partner, communication is big, um, finding alternate plans. Uh, to handle things uh, when those things become apparent too. A lot of times we, we give up on that communication aspect. Um, the whole idea is to avoid uh, self-sabotaging or self-destructive tendencies. And the first thing comes with um, awareness, um, self-awareness, um, understanding what you need for that not to be sabotaged. Find out what you're afraid of. And uh, as they say, face your fears. So, that's what I, I, I leave as my um, end of statement, um, along with everything I, I, I typed in the uh, in the um, in the uh, inbox uh, today. So um, face your fears, people, and be real with yourself. Shalom. I yield. I say peace to everybody. It's always a lovely time. I'm out. Peace. Oh yeah, shalom, shalom. Brother, shalom. Brother. Yeah. Leave it up to Yeshayahu. He just gonna say his stuff and leave. I'll tell you about people. Uh, guess it's my turn now. Shalom, so brother. Uh, let throw it. Um, what are the tools? What are the tools is the question, right? What are the, mm -hmm. what tools exist? I like that. To help a person overcome a mindset fix on self stuff. What tools? All right. Of course, I'm gonna be uh, biased and say, I'm just gonna name tools real quick and then I might speak on it a little bit. Tool number one. Tool number one. I would say uh, the literature, uh, Hebrew literature inspired through uh, the Most High Yah and the culture within it. That is tool number one. But it's not my number one tool. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you why. Yes, it's the number one tool, but it's not the number one tool. Why do I say that? We are in a society to where people are easily influenced, manipulated, and conditioned. So, and unlearned too. So we try to take something that was of ancient and Eastern culture and put it with the Western world without any guidance. So it's the number one tool, but the number one tool within the number one tool is getting with um, eldership, righteous eldership, to help you in the context of what we're talking about, relationship and not sabotaging it, help direct you and, um, and uh, condition you in a righteous way towards success. That's the number one tool, I believe, within the tool within the number one tool, whatever. So you got the scripts, you got through the most high, then you have elders, which I believe is very important. I really didn't un understand, I'm 35 years old and I've always been respected to, towards my elders, but in the context of this walk and success and not sabotaging, I think within the last seven years is when I realized how important uh, eldership was. Within the last couple of years, I, w I realized how important eldership is community-wise, community family-wise, 
man and woman wise. Um, and I think that's like the number one tool, bringing the Bible or putting the Bible aside. When you think of other ethnicities, other people, whether it's Indian, people of India, uh, Arabs, Chinese, uh, all of these things, I think true culture, true order, uh, true education, family education, outside of help of psych, you know, psychological, uh, psych, um, ah, y'all know what I'm trying to say, psychologists or whatever. That's the number one tool. Psychological right. help, right? <laughs> you know, man, look, I just got done eating some cereal and the milk was kind of bogus, man, so messing up my speech. I'm playing. <laughs> No, but seriously, real talk, you know, some real stuff. Um, I think, because we see it all over the place, it's failures. Everybody is sabotaging their relationship. You know, people giving up, people not being together because they're not liking certain things. Uh, they're not being led properly, man. And I know that's not real big on the forefront of our community. Uh, I know it's big within our community, but it's not big being taught. So a lot of us are not aware. A lot of us don't know. So, uh the only example I could use, like I just told you, outside of the Bible, is look at all the other nations. You know, um, I don't say that to say it's not problems within it, but it is a, a statistical thing to look at as far as us. Why are we at the bottom? We've been saying this throughout the whole show. Why are we at the bottom? It's lack of structure, structure, cultural teaching, um, uh, family success teaching and building. The, the number one tool is leadership, eldership, and culture. That's just my opinion, other than outside of the Bible. Uh, so those that's listening in, if you are a single woman, if you are a single man, and you have been through a whole lot, just ask me, a answer me this one question in the, in the chat. Write this in the chat, and those are on here right now, if you're single. Through all of the, uh, the people, the men and or women you've been through, or been with, sorry. Did that's, you that's say it. been through? Oh, that sounds horrible. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Sometimes truth hit hard. Have you, I got to finish this last statement. I heard, I heard the beat, but I think this is going to be the most profound of what I'm going to say. Nah, bro. All, this, all that nah, other stuff, nah, all that other stuff, all that other stuff was a rant. Okay, so this is truth right here. This is truth. All of you all that are single right now, that has had a couple of relationships, and before you all became in a relationship, did you have elders, a man and or a woman, married couple, help guide your courtship? Or did you just pick that man and or woman and decide to be in a relationship, then you introduce them to the family or the elders when it was too late. Think on that question. All the older women and the older men, think on that question. For me, my answer is no. I didn't have or use an L, a righteous elder that was along my journey to kind of help guide the courtship. And some people say, well, it could fail regardless. But how do you know if you never try? And with that, I yield. Boom. Did you say boss? What'd you say? I'm sorry. I said boom. Boom. <laughs> Dang. Um, what tools exist to help a person overcome the mindset fixed on self-sabotage? Honestly, and, and I'm gonna say this only from because it's my experience, and I'm not saying it as the you know, as the all in, you know, whatever like that, but for me, um, but for me. Uh, community helped me um, climb out of the grave that I was in. Uh, one of the things that I needed and didn't realize at the time, I needed to see examples of functionality uh, for my life, for you know, for marriage, for being you know, for being a Hebrew man. All of these things I needed to see the examples. It's one thing to hear someone say it. Because it, it's just information. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever. But when you actually see it happen and see it go down, that feeds a different part of your soul. It feeds a different part of your mind. So 
when I started to see functional relationships, like I look at um, I always look, I always look to um, Most High Blessed Memory Chief of Chiefs Naftali. Him and his wife, they met in their late teens, early twenties, came into the truth together, and had almost sixty years in. Whatever. I mean, that's a long time to be looking in anybody's face. <laughs> whatever you know, whatever. but you, but you, but the functionality of the relationship because they grew together. They had their ups, they had their downs, they had their highs, they had their lows, but they learned how to be functional because they saw functionality. And so all they did was took what they saw, implemented it in a way that was um, conducive to their relationship and they flourished. And I had an opportunity to see these type of relationships all throughout the Hebrew community. This is why I mentioned um, the last time, uh, I think it was on the last show, or maybe the last couple shows, where I spoke about the difference between the fishbowl and the pond. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us, when it comes to these relationships, whatever, we're operating with a fishbowl mentality. This is why it's always dangerous. And I had to learn this too, because I'm a, you know, I, I'm a recluse. You know, um, I guess naturally, I'm a recluse. I like to be by myself. But I also know the dangers of being a recluse is because now there's no checks and balances. You start believing every, you start believing your own hype and start believing that everything you're thinking is right. Like, yeah, it's whatever. I'm, you know, like the five percenters used to say, you know, I, you know, I am, <laughs> I am the best knower. So when you start thinking like that, there's no checks and balances. There's nobody to tell you, hey, you're full of crap. Or, hey, <laughs> you're off. You need to get, you know, saying you need to level up or whatever. But when you're in a community and everyone is giving you checks and balances, you don't have the time to develop or to further establish um, these self, um, you know, these the, the self-destructive tendencies because someone's going to see it and say, "Oh no, brother, you're, you're out of your damn mind. There's a devil on you or something. You need learning. You need teaching." And so for me, that's what I what I was able to receive and what helped me. To, again, like I said, to climb out of that self-sabotage grave that I was in in my, um, in my teenage years. You have to surround yourself um, with, exam with, with positive examples, with, um, you know, with uh, um, thoroughly vetted examples of success, relationship-wise, uh, doctrinal-wise, doctrinal uh, wealth-wise. You have to have that around you so that everything that you grew up hearing the narrative that you heard growing up starts to take a back seat because most of everything that's coming into your ear is righteousness is positivity it's upward mobility so the negativity becomes the minority it becomes a minority concept then it becomes easier to brush it off your shoulder and be like eh, i'm not with that no more because you're being constantly flooded with right thinking uh i, I just malachi yo just slipped out of me you know <laughs> right knowledge you know what I'm saying, starts to seep in. And so the old thoughts get, you know, get pushed to the, um, to the back. And I think anybody who, you know, those of us who are, um, you know, who are into psychology, we know that, you know, they, they talk about core beliefs. Anything that you learn from birth to 10 years old is usually considered your core beliefs and that they never really go away. You just learn how to effectively build on top or build around it. So a lot of things that we know when we were children, it's still there. And if we're not careful, we could slip back into it, but that's the power of having the pond around you, having plenty of other sources of righteousness, of success, and whatnot around you, so that even when you do have those thoughts that pop up in your head occasionally, they're immediately exercised out of your um, out of your circumference. So again, for me, um, it's it, it's it's community, uh, whether you're in a camp. Uh, whether you're in a, um, a, a communal setting, temple, whatever you call your establishment, when you have a body of individuals who have already leveled up, it's going to force you to level up. And I think that will kind of, you know, kind of feeds into the mindset of kind of getting rid of self self sabotaging uh, tendencies because your community is not going to allow it, unless it's a self sabotaging community. Then you screwed. Then you screwed uh, ten times over. That's right. <laughs> but um, but just but generally speaking, for me, um, in my experiences, 
that's what helped me, you know, helped me because I was able to see the examples of success, financial success, spiritual success, um, mar marital success. And so I took that and said, okay, now once I clean up the graveyard in my, in my backyard, now I can move forward the right way. And that's what I was able to extract from that. So for me, that's what, you know, that's what, um, what helped me. With that, I, um, I fall back. Okay. Um, I definitely agree with the brothers. They said it. You need somebody around you, um, preferably an elder or someone knowledgeable. Um, and you have to be self-aware because somebody can tell you something, but if you're in denial, you're not going to fix it. So you have to be self-aware and willing to check yourself and the people around you. Um, you can't have a bunch of yes men and women around you. You got to have friends that will check you. And um, all praise to the most high, I had friends um, that will check me. And so did uh, my husband because um, I am a self-sabotager or was, and I tried to do the same thing with that situation, I'm talking about any little argument, we can be arguing over who ate the last cookie. I'm like, you can leave, everybody else did, type thing, because of what you used to. And luckily for me, I had somebody who loved me unconditionally, so when I be talking crazy, he just ignored me. And he'd just be looking like, you done? Okay. It was a cookie, Shamika, it was a cookie. So, you know, then I'd be like, well, hold on, it was just a little cookie, I could walk around to the store. So, you know, you got to have somebody willing to check you because he, he has no problem with checking you like it ain't even that deep. And he, he was always the fixer. Like, no matter if he started the argument or me, um, if I, because I always go deep. I'm, I always self-sabotage. I always go real, real deep for no reason. And he'll be the person to always try to make it right. So him doing that, and plus my friends saying what they were saying got me together and then I started checking myself and I started being aware like okay you know so you got to just check yourself self-awareness and like the brother said you got to have people around you who are examples because I I definitely had two people um come later on in my life who had great marriages not to the beat of they never got into it and stuff like that but they them and their issues show me how to work through mine, like arguments and things like that. It actually, me and a wife studying together also taught me how to hold my tongue. Like in arguments, everything you don't have to rebut or everything you don't have to go back and forth. If he say something, just you say less, walk away, let it go. And then revisit it if, necessary everything don't need to be revisited sometimes you just gotta let it go so me and her conversations our studies and just being able to get advice from them as a couple helped us tremendously and it helped me to recognize myself and move past of past hurt and let that baggage go because this person had nothing to do with that and i had to realize too this is a person it was unfair for me to this person who was flesh just like me i cannot expect to heal me because he wasn't the person who hurt me so it was a spiritual thing that i needed to fix and i needed to give it all to the most high because you flesh just like i'm flesh and there's nothing you can do for me that i can't do for myself but the main person i need something done from is the most high so that's how I had to get past the self-sabotageness of it all. And I yield there. That was heavy. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not close. I'm still. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was excellent, Shamika, you know what I'm saying? And I, I was over here like, yeah, girl, okay. Um, and I like how you said, uh, <laughs> like how you said your husband is the one to uh, sit still when you're going off. And I think um, that's beautiful. That's another example. Not that people are responsible for us, but it's, it helps when the other person 
has a consciousness of the process that has to happen in order for you to get better too. That's ideal, but that's good. Um, real quick. So the question again is um what tools exist to help with the self-sabotage? Um, the first thing I think is, is not not in any, any order, but mapping out what you desire for yourself. So if you need to write things down, some people are really into vision boards or whatever, or writing stuff down. Or if you are, in, are you interested in a relationship, like create a chart of the stuff that you will and will not tolerate. I had to do it. I, I did it years ago, but I did it again and I had to go back and revise some things because uh, it's a constant process where you're learning yourself and you're learning, you know, what's what's mandatory and what ain't that serious you know what i'm saying but writing that stuff out and then when you write those things out be truthful in it are you putting them according to what you think is gonna make yourself attractive or are you showing yourself as you are like everybody ain't for everybody you're not for everybody so if there's things about you that you uh require or desire that is okay <laughs> unless you're trying to break the torah you can't be breaking the torah it's almost my way or the highway but if you're a Bible believer, especially if you think if you believe you should follow it, if you include stuff on there that's Torah specific, you know what I'm saying? That's cool. But uh, the point is that uh, being clear about what you desire so that nobody can really come in and throw you off guard. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, sticking to your standards. Uh, so I just said it. So sticking to your standards. Once you have this stuff mapped out, because knowing and doing the two different things, you can say I want a brother that's X Y Z, but if you let every time Dick and uh elijah come along and say stuff to you you know what i'm saying and you're not you're not holding them accountable then you're the problem because we don't be like the things that i've gone through in my past not that i'm was responsible for all of it but a lot of it i let slide you know what i'm saying so i'm the problem period i didn't like shama said i didn't go and ask no elder when i divorced my husband and remarried him my my, my, my mother-in-law was like what what changed and in hindsight, I didn't even, I didn't peek what she was talking about, but she was trying to school me, but I wasn't listening because I'm like, oh, I love, and I still day I love them. I still love them. So, but we think we right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then uh, also knowing that you are enough. People say stuff like, oh, you know, you're somebody's better half or I ain't no half nothing. I'm a whole person by myself. You know what I'm saying? And you can't be a half person trying to help somebody. You're going to give them a half ass product. So it's okay for you to, to know that you're enough as you are, you know what I'm saying? And to work on that so that you'll be able to attract and be a better help. Uh, speaking from one, one perspective, you'll be a better help being fully actualized in of yourself. You know what you, you know what your faults are, you know what your strengths are, you know uh, the areas where you're in the middle, you haven't really quite figured it out, but that's okay. This whole idea of half man, half woman, I don't understand that. That's a lie. So that's what I think. Okay, so. Did I just hear you say half man, half woman? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Did you say half? Did you say half man, half woman? <laughs> I did. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. That because I yeah that caught me off guard. That's crazy. But yeah. Anyway, what tools exist? to help a person overcome a mindset fixed on sabotage. Okay. Uh, oh, man, got me crying with that one. That's crazy. Uh, uh, one thing I do want to say is this. Don't take that mindset to the grave, convincing yourself that you're protecting yourself and you're going to be in, 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 in righteousness with the most high. And you're going to, and, and, you know, don't, don't, don't assume that. Don't 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 assume that ah uh, see I'm doing this because I ain't trying to get hurt and you just die with that mindset and you think that you're gonna be don't assume that you're in the right alignment with the most high by doing that. I saw that I'm gonna say I ain't saying that you in or you're not gonna be, but I'm just saying you don't wanna assume that you're gonna be. You know, that that's a bad thing that might turn out for you. But um uh uh, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna break it down into into genders with it because, um, and I, I'm glad Shamika brought up something that her and her husband be going through, or, or at, at one point in time they was they they, they had to discuss and she had to check herself after they after he came and you know fix certain things, and that's what I want 
this is a solution for the brothers. This is what I want brothers to understand. That is your job. You know what I'm saying? As a husband, is to be the one that can fix things. You're not gonna be always be perfect. You're not gonna be Superman. You're not gonna be, you know, this indestructible type of uh, being. But at the same time, that is your nature. Your nature is the commander, the administrator. You know what I'm saying? The solution-based thinker. You have the logic. You have the things and the tools necessary in your nature to bring solutions. This is how societies are built. Societies are built by men. You see what I'm saying? And so isolation is key. You know what I'm saying? So, but, you know, in this society, a lot of brothers, uh, you know, they run and jump right into a relationship. That's just how the society is. We just run and jump right into a relationship, either in high school or soon we get out. And we haven't even, we haven't took time to ourselves to develop as a young man, as a young, as, as young man and as, and as a young man to understand how we're going to lead a family, how we're going to fix and bring solutions to a issue. Um, we haven't given ourselves the time to mature on, on that level, especially a lot of us that's coming from fatherless households, really behind the time when it comes to that. So isolation for brothers and not being, not jumping into a relationship at a young age is key for brothers. Because we don't have... Our biological clock is not what a woman's is. It's not the same thing. We don't have, uh, uh, we, we don't have to worry about, oh man, my peak is at this time or that time. Like, no, work on yourself as a man, understand how to lead, understand how to be a three-dimensional thinker, understand how to see. And when I say see, how to discern, how to have wisdom, how to have understanding. So that if you, come across a situation, maybe you have a friend or a wife or whoever, or, you know, a child, even a child, if they somehow develop this trait from some, you know, exterior source or whatever the case is, that you can bring forth a solution. And so for the women, I would advise, I agree with Shema, I will, and this is for the men as well. Now, just like what Shema was saying earlier, getting some elders, you know what I'm saying, some righteous elders, some conscious elders, you know, uh, 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 men and women that that know that that know how uh, and that has the experience, the life experience to uh, guide and lead, and take their advice. Don't be like, "I'm gonna get advice," because I can't stand people that like, "I, I mean, you a person that get good advice and then they don't listen to nothing you said." Like, like, bro, like, like, take their advice, take the wise counsel. And run with it. I mean, like we run, we run with everything else. We don't want to run with no wise counsel, though. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, um, so those are some of the things I think a a a a person can utilize to get themselves out of that rut. A couple of other things I would say is meditation. Um, yes, y'all was saying about uh, when we were talking about affirmations earlier and that they're not going to be effective unless you are real with yourself and understanding what your flaws are. But that's a way to uh, that's a way to start. Um, and, you know, I normally would try to give a solution based off my own experience. But in this case, I, I, I couldn't really do so because I'm a person who's naturally self-willed and have a strong will. And I know that's not everyone. You know what I'm saying? And um and I also know that some I have a little bit more of an advantage over certain people than others, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a father in my life and a lot of my will and the strength that I have in certain things and a lot of the passion that I have comes from what my father had when I was coming up. So, but at the same time, I would also use that as a as a backdrop to say that that's another way to get us out of this is for those who you know, going back to the point I made earlier about don't go to the grave with that mindset, because at the end of the day, like you said, you're the only one that can fix you. Don't you go to the grave with that mindset. Don't you continue to make that excuse that, well, all I know is this, so I can't fix nothing. 
I don't want to hear that because you can't come around me. You can't come around me with that. I'm telling you right now. You're gonna be mad. Like I don't like that dude, Shaul, man. He he'll never I ain't I don't wanna hit. You know what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, um, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be like, I'm tired of this, and I'm gonna change it. And you're gonna have to will yourself to change it. You know what I'm saying? Since you the one that uh that you feel is the one capable of, you know, making yourself happy and uh, and getting yourself out of this out of this hole. You're gonna have to figure out a way, and you're gonna have to get so tired that you're gonna say, "I'm going, I, I'm going to do this." Conscious effort. With that, shalom, peace and blessings. Yeah, well, well said. Okay, oh, Shmai, you want to say something? Uh, before you end it, like I, don't, I know we got a couple people to go through, I think, I don't know. But before you end, I want to bring something out that might be helpful, especially for the men and uh, interesting probably for the women to hear too. But go ahead. Just, you know, before you close out, I just wanted to bring that up. No, go ahead because I'm going I'm to close it out and I'm going I'm to I'm announce the next two weeks uh, episode titles. All right, I uh, appreciate all y'all again. Just want to make sure I say that. Um, this might not be, I believe it's, it can be applied to this uh, self-sabotaging thing, uh, topic. But one of the reasons I, I like, like I love all the panel on here, and those is listening. I love all y'all, man. Y'all all bring some very um, important pieces to the puzzle um important individual ministries to the puzzle too and you wake a lot of us up i get woke up all the time through you all uh i loved what the part that shaul brings to it and what i brought from what i see from his message a lot is i feel like his ministry is more geared towards not only everybody but more so the man and I think it's very important how he does that. At first, I wasn't, I used to be a type that would be like, okay, we need to bring out both. And I still am because I, that'll help this self, self sabotaging part. But it's a, something that stuck out to me. I don't know if you all uh, came to this. We're going to bring some scripture in real quick, y'all. Let's go to Genesis. Better sheet. Uh oh, see, so look at the face, you know, getting the, getting the head piece together, Zebulon. I see you. Let's go to Genesis. You know what I'm saying? Read a book. Genesis 25 25. Oh, my goodness. That too. I'm going to go to Genesis 1, uh, 27, y'all, real quick. And I want to just show y'all something. And I want I want this to be known for the man because y'all, uh, uh, this needs to be, this is important to me. So it says, so God created man in his own image, right? In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. My question to y'all before I even go forward. Have any one of you on the panel and those that's listening, have you ever looked at those words, male and female, in Hebrew? I know you I have. I have. Yeah. You I say you I have. have. I, 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 have. have. I, I have. Okay, so Shaul has. Tomorrow you say you haven't or you have? I think I have. I might be making it up. Okay, I you have. might be. You're probably making it up. Okay, so. The Hebrew word, I'm going to go, I'm going to read in a minute, but the Hebrew word for the man is Zakar, which is weird, right? We know that man is Isha. It means remember. Yeah, I, I did go, I did, I do know the answer. I, I know don't, the answer. Be, don't, be, don't be killing my message right now, okay? Let me do what I'm trying to do, since, and you're ruining it right now. Ah, okay? Okay, so the man is, the male is Zakar, right? And the female is, what is it, uh, Nekaba? I got to go off memory. I think it's Nekaba or Nas, something. What is it? Uh, yeah, Nakweba. Nakweba, okay. So what is the purpose of me putting this out there? And this is why I love the fact that, you know, myself and Shaul is really bringing on, and, and uh, uh, Zeb, she was there, uh, eldership. And this might be a little bit out of context, but y'all know I'm on, con I do concepts too. Right, so let me go to the actual word. So she said, she gave y'all an idea of uh, the man. The man 
or the male, hold on, let me go to it for y'all one second, is a car. So it means remember, right? To remember. Um, it shows, it says, uh, a male as being who through whom the memorial of parents is continued. We know that, right? We know that through the Tanakh or the Torah, how the, the home is established, the house of so-and-so, right? And then it also says as being the most no noteworthy sex or noteworthy would mean in this context significant sex significant significant of the two uh that doesn't exclude the woman at all but it's a reason behind what i'm trying to bring out so a lot of these uh, things that's going on with us with the self-sabotaging is goes back into the education that i'm talking about uh if the man is supposed to remember something you're supposed to remember something. This is a concept I'm bringing. This is not contextual from the memorial of the family is concerned, but I'm trying to bring something out. You're supposed to remember something. In order to remember something, how something's supposed to be and the order of it, you have to be taught it. It has to be education in there. So elders' job is to teach both, but to really get the man to really know the role and how he is supposed to lead his family in all aspects. That way you can remember from what the elder and the text is teaching and keep passing it down. A memorial for the children coming from them and success within the family. But a lot of us don't remember because a lot of us aren't taught. What does the Most High say all the time? This is for you and your generation to remember. Write this down Amen. daily, X, Y, and Z, to remember. But how do you remember if you don't have the proper leader of the home to bring it out? I told a sister yesterday, and I stole Zebulon's thing with the, 50, with the uh, 5149 when I brought it out. I, I mentioned your name, though, Zeb. I didn't really step. I mentioned yeah, your name. Yeah, that comes from Chief of Chiefs Naftali. I, I co-opted it from him years ago. So, okay. you know. so, I, took it, so I took it from you. And I made sure when I was saying, like what I'm saying now, and I brought this out yesterday too, is not to say that we, we have our, our role. So the man is supposed to bring this stuff forth to the woman. So that way she can uh, uh, teach it amongst the children as well. The man do too, but the roles is a little different in that aspect. My whole point in all this is saying the whole sabotaging of the relationship more so stems from that very foundation we keep talking about, the man and the woman. The man has to be taught properly, man. A lot of us are not taught properly. And a lot of times we're not taught properly is because we don't have the proper righteous elders. Men as the elder and their wives to help teach both. Some of us were too happy or too proud to what we don't need to, we, we feel we don't need to. You know what I'm saying? Some of us on here and out here, we, you know, we feel we're at a certain level. I feel I'm at a certain level, but you best believe I'm about to learn from somebody that's successful. You know what I'm saying? But that's 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 it, y'all. I just wanted to bring it out. Take a study on that Genesis 127. I thought that was interesting a couple of years ago when I heard that. When I looked at it, I'm like, man, this is consistent throughout the whole scripture. And the most I always say, remember. Remember, remember, remember. So who's supposed to remember? Who's supposed to pass it down? Uh, uh, uh. That's crazy. And I hey, see real that's, quick. That's, uh, <laughs> Hit that um, hit that Nakweba. That's where it gets really, really off the chain. Go ahead, hey, bring it out real quick before we leave. I mean, we went to three okay. last week. Let's just go for a couple more minutes. I, yeah, because I'm about to pick it back off what you said. Yeah, but 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 if I can just just a, real quick. And yeah. the next two, the, the next two, what I would want to offer is that the next two weeks we're gonna be talking about these roles. So can we save it until then? Oh. Yeah, because it's it, it, oh, it, 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 it is gonna it, it's gonna get really long, whatever. But I'll just say this: Nequeba, the word for female, it means to pierce or puncture. He just gonna give us that a go, huh? Okay. The nature uh -huh. of the woman. The nature he of the woman. The mic. <laughs> hey, but you know what though? I'm not like I'm not gonna spoil that anything like that because I know he is supposed to be talking about it, but. I like that you brought that out because all like I talk I've been talking to Shamai man for, for a couple of weeks now, like on a consistent basis. And I always tell him like what he was breaking out. 
about about the role of a man, you know what I'm saying, and about understanding the nature of the man and the woman. That way you know how to conduct yourself. Because a lot of the problems that we have in our relationships is just due to how to dwell with one another because we don't accept the roles that we supposed to accept. And that's our nature. You know what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, I just like Fantasia said, you know, that the, the body can't do nothing without the head. So all the brothers have to come back into their rightful place and take a stand and put your foot down and rule your house with uh, balance, but also understanding wisdom and discernment, understanding your role as a man, understanding how to lead, having a vision. Every man, and this is the thing, if you're a brother that's single and you listen to this show right now, if you do not have a vision, do not get married. If you do not have anything that you seek to accomplish or any purpose in your life at this point in time, do not get into a relationship. Actual do not fact. enter a marriage. Never do that because it's your job to have a vision. It's your job to know where you're going. Because you can't lead or go anywhere without the vision. That's why I was, that's why the solution I gave earlier for brothers is isolation. Do not enter a relationship coming out of high school if you're not already in one. And as a matter of fact, if you're in one, you ain't get married, break up with the girl and go into a point of isolation, work on yourself, work on your goals, figure out what you want, and produce of three, a five, a seven, a 10, 15, and a 20 year plan. So that way, when you 30, 35 years old, and you got a certain level of accomplishments in your life, whatever that may be, and you have some instructions to administrate to your family because your children are gonna be seeking guidance from you. And it's your job to tell them where they should go not for you to let them choose because they don't know. It's for you to know what you want them to do. It's for you to know what your wife is to do. And so that's what I wanted to say right there, man. You know, anyway, I'm going to just, I'm going I'm to get out of here. I ain't going to talk too much. You know what I mean? I'm just tripping. Who, 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 man, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't. Real quick, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get ready to close out. This is an excellent, excellent conversation. We had over a hundred comments on the Facebook stream last I checked, so that's a lot of conversation. So praise the most high for um for allowing us to <clears throat> to be open and honest and transparent about it. One thing I will say just to to the comments about manhood, a woman, I mean a man that has his ish together is mad attractive. So I concur. Concur. All right. So what I want to say about the next two weeks, um topics is we're going to do a two-part series on role playing so it's called role playing right because i'm a i like to pun words that like a puns but next week is role playing part one becoming a husband and the next week most high willing is role playing part two becoming a wife so we'll be able to dig into these words if it'll be good if we can definitely dig into I'm bringing scripture out next the next two yeah we, i think that'd be good yeah. for us to bring those things out but we'll be talking about what is it to become a husband like you're not just born a husband and what is it to become a wife and um, we encourage everybody to, of course, contribute to the conversation. We're going to be probably opening the Bible next week, so y'all get ready. I don't know. Uh, you might, might have some people that's going to be like, the Bible. Oh, snap. <laughs> the Bible. Oh, snap. You know there ain't nothing okay. but the word of man. <laughs> yeah, but you, know, but, but you know what's funny about that, though? We, you know, we always saying shalom and happy Sabbath, so somebody should have peeped it a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right. Uh, but... But great peace to everybody. We love you. Um, uh, if you're on Facebook, share the video. If you're on YouTube, watching it later on, share it so we can continue the conversation outside of this um, false, contract, false construct of the internet. But great peace to everybody. <laughs> we love you. And be safe, Shaul. Until next time, shalom, shalom. 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 Shalom.